Sacred Symbols, a PlayStation podcast, is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our show, go to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to Sacred Symbols Plus, a PlayStation podcast supplement. My name is Colin Moriarty. Today I'm joined by a very special group indeed. I'm not sure that we've ever done a Sacred Symbols Plus with this particular group. I'm not sure, but maybe. I don't think so. Maybe. My name is Colin Moriarty again. Let's go around the horn and say hello to everyone. Home team first, Chris Reagan. Good to see you, my friend. How are you today? You're a little intimidating right now in your wife beater. Yeah. With your black, muscles. Black tank top. Yeah, I went for a run. Uh, we start, we're recording this later than we would normally record any mm. kind of sacred. So got a lot of my day kind of started early. It's a little weird. I didn't Good. eat breakfast, though, somehow. I don't mm. know. I just I, I woke up and I was like, I'm not hungry. I'm going to go run, which is really stupid. Mm. <laughs> but I felt it felt right. Good. Well, you look great. Thanks. You have your Yankee hat on and we're ready to go. Let's welcome the away team now. Those coming as guests. Happy to have them here. Brad Ellis. Good to see you all the way from California as well. How are you today? I'm doing good, man. Feeling good. I will also be working out later. I hate running, though. God bless everyone that can do it. I think it's boring as shit. Makes it me want to kill myself, especially <laughs> on a treadmill. It's especially so hot right now to be doing yeah. it in general. Like it's a, it, like right now in California is like it's been 90, 95, 100. It's been pretty pretty rough, but there are some yeah. people uh, I'm a little, I find the it is boring. Working out is very boring. Yeah. But I try to save in my opinion. I don't get like I don't like it. I don't do it in silence or anything like that. But I just try to save good podcasts and shit like yeah. that. And the new rabbit hole, and, and I wanted to say this as I welcome Gene Park of the Washington Post and punching up to the show, new rabbit holes that I've been going through. Gene and I talk back and forth about, we, we want to almost do like a kick, a show on kick or something where we like <laughs> analyze the crazy shit that happens on kick um, and things like that. But my recent rabbit hole, and I watch these when I'm on the uh, elliptical, is like divorce court drama like but real like real footage of like the zoom call of like people like people getting into these really heated fights with each other i love body cam stuff now that stuff is dope there's just so much to keep yourself entertained just with you know outside of the predator catcher stuff and the vigilante stuff there's just a whole ecosystem it's at it's cops on steroids mm. and gene i know you're a, a, a an enjoyer as well so welcome to the show i uh i am of the generation where cops was like the the dominant cultural force. Cops was like fucking Star Wars of TV, you know. It was so good. <laughs> it was it was amazing. So, uh, so I'm like attuned to this. So when I saw that you uh, at, at a at a episode of Constellation or Sig or whatever, um, that you said that you're addicted body cam photo videos, I'm like that's exactly the same wheelhouse that I'm watching. Shout out to Code Blue. You know, yeah, Code Blue YouTube Cam. Channel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the the fact that they actually go through the trouble of foying this stuff this is very it's a very journalistic endeavor. You know, that's a journalistic practice practice to FOIA body cam footage and just to and the way they edit it together to tell a story is so compelling and interesting. And you know, as a former cops reporter, like it it brings me back to 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 those days. I didn't really particularly enjoy it. But now that the stakes are lower, like I don't have to write a story. I'm not. I'm not like personally like witnessing like the, the bodies or whatever, um, and I don't have to like interview uh, the cops or, or like the victims or whatever like that. Removed from it, you know, it was still like an interesting thing that happened like almost every day to me. You know, so this is how I get to like I get to live vicariously through these wacky videos. The divorce court. I, I didn't even think about that. that that's another that's another uh, 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 point of misery that I could be witnessing, you know, so dude, it's just so interesting. There's just so like you can watch almost anything on the Internet. It's mm -hmm. it's yep. almost Micah was talking about this actually to me. Her parents were here for the last couple of days. When we were ch chatting about a bunch of different things. And she was like, really, it seems like reality TV, as we understood it, is kind of it's on its way out because now you really can just get reality. Like you don't you don't need to have it through any sort of filter and cops. You're right about cops being an institution because it was Saturday night for many for decades. And my uncle Mike, who we always comes up on the shows in other contexts, he's a funny guy. He would always have to be home Saturday night at eight for cops. Mm -hmm. Like if you were we were at like some sort of party or like, you know, an afternoon Yankee game or something, be like, I gotta get home, man. Like, well, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Cop. And cops is so fucking good. But the body cam stuff's even better. 
and everyone wanted the body cams to protect, you know, so cops wouldn't fuck around and that's fine. And you find that every once in a while, but what they've really had, what's really happened is showing how crazy everyone that cops deal with are. Mm -hmm. Um, and the meltdowns that I have seen on these body cam footage is Dewey arrests and like the, mm -hmm. the daughter of the mayor getting arrested and all these kinds of things like ru life ruining shit mm -hmm. just caught on these. I don't know. It's just so fascinating. But nonetheless. Yeah, no, it, it, it's fascinating to see people at the worst days of their lives, you know, um, <laughs> it is. And, and, that, and that's exactly. the window that these 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 channels and, and, and body cams give us, you know. Um, so yeah, like I, I I started a kick account uh, because I heard you know I, I'm interested in that that guy Vitali, uh, partnering up with all these fucking rappers uh, to, to catch pedophiles. Yeah, it's crazy, so and they're going, on, they're going crazy on that on that. Yeah, so on my birthday, uh, rapper and R&B singer Sway Lee partnered up with Vitali. <laughs> Sway Lee is what was the guy who sang Sunflower for Spider Man Miles Morales. He's literally yeah. on Disney movie, and here he is on Kick.com, uh, 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 shaving a pedophile's head. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dude, on kick, they like, this is going to be a topic of mine on Constellation, maybe this week, but soon, is like just vigilantism and like how far you want it to, like how far it should go and all of that. And these guys are getting, it's like the guy that beats the shit out of them basically and slaps them and stuff like that. Like that's yeah. going a little too far. And these guys, I saw one where they put like hair loss gel on the dude's head. So yeah. like he what just like shed all like, his hair off. Like Nair? Yeah, like some, it was some like, yes, yeah, some yeah, chemical. Like, yeah, yeah. And, it, and then it was all patched up or whatever. Yeah. And then they got fucking Akon to sing Locked Up Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah they I did see yeah. that, yeah. This First of all, so I didn't strange. know, I, I forgot that Akon was still alive. I thought he was, <laughs> I thought he was fucking dead. So, <laughs> like, 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 like a pro wrestler, you know? Right. Um. So I was very delighted to see that he was still alive and catching pedophiles. Amazing, you know? <laughs> like, he couldn't be more yeah. alive than ever. Uh. So, yeah, I, this is just quality, quality entertainment. Uh, to be quite honest, I know that it's that is decrepit. I know I, it's why I don't talk about it openly on the on the timeline because this is some some dark shit. It is. That's why I want to. Yeah, we'll get into it on, on the appropriate place. So please look forward <laughs> yeah. to it. Anyways, everyone's um, Batman out there nowadays. Just I doing know. vigilante justice. And I'm I, yeah. Do they wear outfits and shit? It. I hope they dress up. <laughs> yeah, they some, some of them do. Uh, well, the dads against predators, they always wear their dap gear. You know? Yeah, they wear. They wouldn't gear. Be, wear like a cowl or something. You got to go all in. A cape, maybe. Yeah. Well, well, J, 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 J Didion would, would would sometimes like dress up and. Um, uh, yeah. There, there was these guys. Oh God, what was it? What was it called? Uh, tribute media or or some, something trilogy media. But then they on Halloween they dressed up as Mario and Luigi, you know, and then they <laughs> and then the and then the the the, the girl the, the the fifteen year old girl or whatever got the pedophile to take like a really scalding hot bath. <laughs> like they, they, they just they, they only turn on the hot water. Like that was it. And then like the pedophile <laughs> got it. He was like God, God damn. And he was naked and his wing all all hanging out. And he was like trying to like adjust to, like the hot water. And then they burst into the, the into the bathroom with uh, Mario and Luigi costumes. You know? <laughs> and they're like, Whoa! Yeah, just, <laughs> "What a schizophrenic it's completely experience. nonsense!" I, I fucking love it. I'm addicted to it. I eat Wait, I eat dinner to that shit. Do they yeah, call they the cops <laughs> after? Huh? Do they? Oh, call they the do cops call after? the cops. They they uh, Skeeter Jean, the one I'm talking about, uh, uh, that they would call the cops. Uh, Dads against against predators used to call the cops, but they've given up because uh, the cops would never like pursue the cases. So now they've resorted Dude, to sla slapping and punching. It is Batman now. Holy yeah, that, shit. Like, that, that's just straight up Batman. Like They're just straight up punching and kicking <laughs> yeah, pedophiles like, in the face. Yeah, th those guys have kind of gone off the deep end. It's interesting because they really do just like beat the shit out of people now, basically. Yeah. There, but there was that one funny video I sent you where they, they had the guy in front of the bush. And they were like, oh. dude, it was so funny. It was like just a 10 second clip. And they had this guy like in front of like this huge hedgerow. And he's like, listen, if you don't, if you tell me a lie, I'm going to slap the shit out of you. And he's like, how old was she? And he's like 18. He just fucking slaps him and pushes oh him into the bushes God. or whatever. And he just got just falls into the bushes. It's just so fucking good. <laughs> he really disappears in that video, too. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's like, it's like that, Homer uh, going into the exactly. In, in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it, it's 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 really cinema, isn't it? <laughs> that's what that's what I, that's what they see. I love this, sh and it's very dangerous. So dads against predators, the guys that just slap people. Uh, one of them already got shot once. Jay, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, somebody just, somebody got killed. I know for, uh, in one of these. Yeah, Blue that was Pop, that guy. Like, Shakur, right? He's in Michigan yeah. or was in Michigan? I think he was in Michigan. Yeah, and and, and he he caught the wrong pedophile. It was a, it was a guy, and he just pulled out a gun, shot him. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the Damn. thing. It's like I, I could never. I don't know. 
I would I would hate to be killed by a pedophile. You know, it's like there's something. Yeah, that's that sucks know, ass, man. dude. That would suck yeah, ass so that's, much. That's rough. Yeah. On, on, on like the post game carnage report, that's like a rough. That's, that's like a, that's a rough getting right. knifed in Counter Strike. You don't want that shit. Oh. It's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. The, the, the quick aside too, the Dads Against Predators. They did uh, get a, a New York City uh, assistant district attorney to saw that. to resign. Because they caught his ass that. in Bronx, in the Bronx, and he tried and to run away. Shit. He ran from the cops, which was crazy, you know. Yeah, and he got it, and he resigned. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that, that yeah. it's Batman. Nonetheless, we'll get into the vigilante justice in the proper ways. <laughs> I, I just was thinking about Gene because uh, that's that's what I've been, you know, because so, oh, it came up because working out, like that's all working I out, listen yeah. to a lot of. Like I literally just listen to this wife and husband argue in court <laughs> about alimony. Like, this is so good. Why are you working yeah. out? Is that what yeah. gets you fucking going, dude? It's just like something to listen to, you know? All right. <laughs> like, just something to enjoy. Out of everything you could listen to, just a poor family. Well, I'm kind of sick of the politics. You know, sports apart. a little slow. It's picking up, you know? Dude, but, just get into, like, Warhammer lore or something, Colin. You'll be good for 10 years. Yeah. I think I'll pass it's, on It's that. not as interesting as people being miserable in real life. That's, right. That's, that's <laughs> a sad thing. I guess so, that's dude. Right. <laughs> All right, let's get into the topic at hand. I convened you guys on Discord just yesterday to ask if anyone wanted to do this with me. And so thank you guys for taking the time. I feel like we should have like some sort of, I don't know if it's a postmortem or whatever. We're kind of still early on, but just how everyone's feeling about what's going on with Bungie now. I'm not a player of Bungie's games. I played a little bit of the first Destiny and I've played the early Halo games, but I wouldn't consider myself a, a Bungie fan by any stretch of the imagination. And I also would say that from a business standpoint, I was immediately skeptical of this deal, as I think the listeners know that I just didn't really understand. It's good. I I guess I get the academic like, oh, this is what we're going to do. And like, we're going to really intellectualize this and use their skills to boost everything and bolster our operation and all that. But it just was a bad deal. Mm -hmm. And um, but you guys do play and are more familiar with the brand, are more familiar with their goings on. And so I just wanted to pick your brain about a number of things, including rumors from Bloomberg about the canceled kind of Destiny spinoff, the fact that they've lost significant leadership, apparently kind of quietly, and that might have not even been part of the layoffs. It might have even been a firing or just people leaving um, because they want to kind of bail out. And uh, what seems to be kind of a culture death in some sense there. So, um, Chris, I want to go to you first, just Mm. because I relate Bungie to you more deeply than anyone I've ever really known. So, mm-hmm. um, how do you feel about this? Like, where, where are you on? Where's your mind at with Bungie? I mean, this is akin to for for you. I imagine this would be akin to, for Naughty Dog or something like that falling apart for me, or suddenly looking on like on its it's on its back foot or something like that. Yeah, I mean, in in some ways, I mean, yeah, I I definitely have like a long history with Bungie. I think the only game that I haven't played, at least in some way of theirs, is like Operation Desert Storm from like the nineties. I've played Gnop, I've played Myth, and a little bit of Oni, and obviously Halo, Destiny, all this stuff. And so, like, I I know this studio pretty intimately. I know a lot of the the history. I know a lot of the the key talent. And to be fair, Bungie has lost key talent before. It's it's a lot like Naughty Dog in the sense that, like, you know, um, when the shift from, you know, the, the Jack and Daxter era to the Uncharted era, there's like a lot of kind of key talent shifting places, different people kind of rising up and, and, and um, you know, taking leadership and re, re-identifying the studio. That's happened at least a couple of times at this point. I know in, in the very beginning, Alex Seropian, Alex Seropian left pretty early on, and it was just Jason Jones and the rest of those guys, and obviously Staten left, and Hardy LaBelle and Jamie Greesemer and these are like key architects of Halo. Um, and then Destiny had its own kind of like reemergence with like Luke Smith and and Mark Noseworthy. These are the people who are now gone, who are gone now. Um, and I guess the question at the top of my mind is like, yeah, this is all pretty not ideal. You know what I mean? Like Bungie has never been in as precarious a situation as we've seen uh, over the last couple of weeks, at least publicly. There could be an argument to be made about, you know, Halo 2's development being a famously, famously tumultuous uh, time where everybody was borderline suicidal. And it was probably I, I would pro- I would imagine that that was probably technically worse. But there's no doubt that like this was like a this was uh, a miss a misfire as far as a, an acquisition goes from on Sony's part and. You know, how this shakes up really depends on what talent is there at the studio left or like who is there to pick up the torch 
going forward in this really kind of muted time where a lot of a lot of future projects are canceled uh the prospects for destiny are looking bleak uh the weight on the shoulders of marathon is so intense um who's going to be there really to take the torch from luke smith from mark noseworthy if there if there really is anybody um and to be fair i've i've not paid as deep attention to Bungie as a studio specifically as of like the last couple months so I don't know like maybe there are maybe there is talent there that I'm not aware of maybe there are like key darlings on the team I'm sure there are in fact I'm sure there's probably a lot of mega mega talented devs at Bungie but yeah Mark Noseworthy and Luke Smith are not people you want missing um without a proper replacement in head so it's it's definitely it's shaky ground man and and the, the weight on Marathon is crazy because Marathon really uh, the, success, the success of Marathon really determines the success the the future of the studio at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chris, do you know? Do you have any ideas why maybe Luke Smith is gone since he was such like a well known guy involved in the series with Destiny? Yeah, so yes, yeah, so, I mean he gave he did. Uh, I don't know if it's a Destiny Direct specifically, but he did a teaser like a couple months ago indicating that you know there was something that they were working on, and and presumably sometime in between then and now. Um, you know, that project got kicked to the wayside, that project got canned. Um, and I would imagine that he was just like, well, that was like my whole thing. So uh, I, you know, I, I guess like, I don't know what is left for me to do here. Um, They couldn't stick him on another team. Yeah. I mean, it's, you don't think, I don't know. I mean, Bungie is a very, very, they're very protective of, of culture in a way that's probably like in, in a way that's probably immature on some level, like they're definitely <laughs> they're definitely like a club, you know, and uh, I can imagine that uh, having a project canned not from not from within, but from Sony or like, you know, from an overlord, as they would like probably put it in the in the old days is probably frustrating enough for for, you know, one of those people who's like has like a deep history with the with the studio to be like, "Well, I'm 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 out of here, you know? Like you're not going to mm. stick me on something else that I don't want. You're not going to stick me on something that I don't want to be on." And I have a, no. you know, a pedigree and and like a a, a reputation and 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 uh, you know, uh, enough of a a resume here that I can go wherever. Yeah, he I can go really anywhere, want, you know. Mm-hmm. But he confirmed to have like quit the company himself. He didn't get fired or laid off. As as far as far as I know, he was like Mark Noseworthy and Luke Smith were not part of the the layoffs that that hit Bungie. As far as I know, okay. like they left quietly, um, presumably at around the time of the secret cancellation of these these other spinoff projects. Um, Got it. Or, or or probably like the cancellation of Destiny Three, um, which as we know, was never apparently being worked on, which is wild to me that you would have all these like plates spinning, but not have destiny three spinning is, is <laughs> kind of insane to me, but you know, you it's, say it's a mess. Interesting- oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris, please. No, no, no I, that's it. I just uh, put a period on it. You know, um, I was going to say you make an interesting point about um, marathon, which, which I think is really a vital point. And this is something I said to some degree last week, which was, I don't really understand how this game is supposed to make all of this money back mm-hmm. for Sony. The The reality with, and I, I, I wonder if this has to do with them being kind of leaving or maybe they have different contracts and all of the kinds of things and, and it's just dealt with differently. They had to be kind of bought out and all the rest is that it seems like Bungie's actually very lucky that Sony got involved with them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Otherwise, they would be in enormous amounts of trouble, especially trying to borrow money in this economy at these rates or getting into bed with publishers as they're pulling out of almost all, uh, not all, but many deals as developers are closing left, right, and center. It's surprising that they're not more grateful mm. of the involvement of the company. And I don't say that as a Sony stand, although it's, it does sound like that, no doubt. I say that just out of the reality. It's like, damn, this company has not made a fucking penny in profit since Sony bought it, basically. So not only is it the $3.6 billion cost to buy them, it's all the money they spent keeping the team going. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know how Marathon's supposed to do that. What's what Mar- people are going to suggest Marathon's going to make billions of dollars, billions. That would be awesome. But I don't know about that. 
not not in this not in this environment with all these different games you have to be very 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 good the the thing they have though is that they are very 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 good so Mm -hmm. they definitely have that sort of advantage but let's get gene on the record here before we get any further gene what are your high level thoughts on on all this like what's on your mind recently since all this has been going on with Bungie? um yeah uh, i i guess uh, the thing on my forefront at, at the forefront of my mind is what i tweeted about last night is that I, I think the most interesting thing I find about the, uh, this whole thing, other than you know the terrible layoffs and everything, and the bad management, is uh, that 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 project payback, uh, the one that was going to be uh, the Destiny third person uh, 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 game that was inspired by Warframe and Genshin Impact, right? It was a gotcha. And game. what was interesting that interesting is that you know like you know the 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 response to, uh, there's barely any, any information you know and that's that's barely any information to work on right. But the immediate reaction from a lot of Destiny creators uh, that I was watching, from Paul Tassi to Skill Up to, um, to my my name is Bayef, and and even on Reddit, uh, or even Chris too, was like, I don't know if this was going to move the needle. Um, my perspective is that project was not meant to appease Destiny fans and Destiny creators and Destiny pe- pe- people who are already locked in Destiny. Uh, you know, like so someone in my replies was like, "Well, and they're not playing Destiny, yeah. Well, they're playing a fucking Bungie game. What the fuck are you thinking? You know, like, like the whole point is that that they they they're they're still in the Bungie ecosystem and they're still learning about the Destiny universe, right? I think the point of the project was to not appease Destiny creators and be like, "Oh, you need to focus more on Destiny." The whole thing was that 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 Destiny was uh, kind of an anchor, a, a, an albatross, right? A, a sinking. Uh, cost, some cost fallacy where it's, we're just losing uh, audience every day, every day. There are people dead now that don't play Destiny anymore, right? Uh, so you have to consider that, you know, I, th- 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 that, that's just the, the, the brass tax of it, you know, you have to consider that people will fucking die and then, uh, and then your audience is dwindling, you know? Um, so it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, bringing back, bringing back to the Washington Post, right? Um, the Washington Post, uh, uh, over 80% of our readership are people over 65 and they are white and they are old, right? And they make about at least two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars a year, right? That is our our our, our, our subscriber base. Um, so many of uh, the comments under our video game coverage, uh, even in Launcher or even mine, were like, "Why the fuck is the Washington Post covering it?" You know. Mm. Um, so the, the so to continue to focus only on Destiny Two is basically like the Washington Post saying, "Well, our our comments are saying." Why the fuck are we covering this? So maybe we shouldn't, right? As opposed mm-hmm. to maybe we should, you know? Because now the comments on, on, underneath a lot of my stories are a lot more accepting. They're, they're, they're actually a little curious about games. If not, they're actually knowledgeable about games, you know? And, and they're like, oh, yeah, I remember this, or I remember that, or oh, yeah, you know, um, Dr. Disrespect is this asshole, or whatever. So they're becoming a lot more knowledgeable because I'm actually slowly bringing in the audience in, right? So that's what I think that that's kind of like where I'm where I'm at, where Bungie is kind of like locked into like we have a dedicated community that does spend money, that has been loyal. And we want to it's the same same problem that so many d- different franchises have. Right. We have a loyal fan base, but we also need to grow the audience. How do we do it? So I think payback was and, and you know, that was being held by Luke Smith. Um, that was going to I think that was their kind of play to kind of become something closer to right games. Yeah. Um, where they would have something that is supplemental to League of Legends, and mm-hmm. I guess my last point is that you know uh, I think it's obvious that Sony had a bad deal with Bungie, that they overpaid, um, that that Pete Parson should not have been able to afford that many cars, right? Um, <laughs> ne- never mind that maybe he should, ne- you know, regardless of the fact that whether he should have been putting money back into the company, you know, Sony Sony overpaid for Bungie. Oh my God, vastly. Yeah. 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 And we but, said that even at the time, it was it seemed somewhat obvious. Yeah, yeah uh, even at the time. But you know, Destiny is still a a, a, a rich universe uh, that has so many different stories and different characters. Uh, it probably has deeper lore than literally every Sony property that there is right now. You know, uh, deeper than Uncharted, deeper than The Last of Us, deeper than Killzone. No, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, you know. I mean, God of War, maybe you know, is the closest thing to to to, to matching the, the 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 breadth of of what of the kind of universe that Destiny built. So Sony does have a very rich, cool, uh, ongoing universe, and maybe that's you know 
Sony is an entertainment company. They are smart about leveraging their entertainment properties. So you could squeeze more out of Destiny uh, and leverage, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the very cool shit that you got. You know, Destiny is fucking cool, you know? Yeah. It's, the issue it's with Destiny has always been uh, just getting people in, you know? Yeah. Always, and, and that's why, like, I feel like that's why it blows my mind that Destiny 3 was not apparently ever spinning. It's mm-hmm. like, why would this is such an obvious answer to, to this issue is like, get a new jumping off point. Mm-hmm. And there was a while where we, where we thought like, hey, you know, like maybe we don't do a Destiny 3. Maybe we just, you know, stick with Destiny 2 for a long time. Yeah. And that would that would be fine were it not for the type of game it is and the type of like upkeep that it would need. Because that game would be like 500 gigabytes, mm-hmm. you know. If if you were to keep every single thing in the game and like keep every single piece of geometry, every single cutscene, every single asset, it's a high production value game, you know. And so it just doesn't fit that. So you gotta, I don't know, man. The fact that 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 was never apparently even in in proper production is is kind mm-hmm. of astounding to me. I and I understand the the goal and the idea between like for payback that makes sense, mm-hmm. but to uh, mm. I don't know, man. To not have that I'm, plate spinning is crazy. I'm glad that you brought up Destiny's like high production and also uh, the the install size, right? Uh, Destiny is massive, and it would it would be like hundreds of gigs, right? Now look at a game like Final Fantasy 14, which has been uh, going on about as long as Destiny, right? Mm-hmm. Um, years, has yeah. all the content from day one uh, from mm-hmm. a Robin Born. You can play all of that shit from day one. All those different planets and universes and literal multiverses. I don't even fucking play the game, but I know there's multiverses, right? And I'm sure Brad can can confirm yeah. that. All this shit, I, and I reinstalled on PS5 is 113 gigs. You know, yeah. How's that possible? What like what what is the difference between between them? I, th- yeah, I but- think I think Destiny Two is just a fucking expensive game to make. I, there's so much <laughs> physics. There's so much like like gameplay. That would be my assumption. Sh- yeah, that, that was my assumption too. Is it's just like just just the physics alone of that game is crazy. Yeah, so yeah, that's why like it's hard for Destiny to be a, an Eve Online or or Final Fantasy fourteen because like yeah, it, it it's they're they're trying to they, they've been trying to build Halo online this whole time, and it's just really really hard to just fit into a file size or a game or it or anything. And like, mm-hmm. th- 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 this is the price of it, and I feel like that is kind of like a uniquely Sony problem, you know, because we, when you look at Concord, there's nothing special about Concord. Except for the facial animation, you know. Except for the production of 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 what Concord is. Concord does look better than Marvel Rivals. It does look better than Overwatch and Valorant. But that's all it has, you know. Uh, so Bungie is uniquely and and coincidentally fits into that kind of Sony mold of being really really high production value and and re- being really really hard to kind of maintain ongoing, you know. Which is probably mm-hmm. why The Last of Us Online was canceled because it's like, I don't know if we can maintain the level of, of fidelity that The Last of Us demands, and also right, it, yeah. it, it'd be a live service. You know, that's a, that's a good point actually. Like, it, it kind of recontextualizes the Bungie, you know, the Bungie influence on The Last of Us Online because it we, we've been talking about it from the outside where it's like, you know, Bungie came to them and said like, oh, it's not sticky enough or whatever, mm-hmm. and so they canceled it. But I, I could see a reality where Bungie was like, listen, you you are a studio that has a very high production value. Mm-hmm. to keep this going for as long as it would need to be a successful live service like you're planning on doing is a borderline death sentence. Mm-hmm. And we know that because we're doing this right now mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's yeah. crazy hard. Mm-hmm. And for your studio, for your history, it's probably not worth it for you to yeah. go down this route. You know, Chris, it's weird. I look at destiny Two as an MMO and I compare it to them because it is an MMO. It's just a different type. Mm-hmm. Sure, but I recall when I I played Destiny 1 when it came out, I played Destiny 2 when it came out, then I'd come back and try to take breaks. And once I found out they were taking out content, I was like, this is a huge red flag. And that like turned me off from ever getting back into the universe because like I'm someone who wants to go through the progression, the story. I want to know what's going on. I don't want to like play a game that they take content out of. And it's so weird because every other MMO, like Gene said, Final Fantasy 14 doesn't have that problem. World of Warcraft is in its 20th year right now. It has a new expansion yeah. coming out and it's still pretty much has all the content in it. I just felt like it felt like to me, Destiny was held together by deck, duct tape mm-hmm. running this thing, getting this game to work. And I think they just couldn't figure it out. Like, obviously, I don't understand. I'm not a game developer. There's got to be some sort of reason they're doing all this, I assume. 
But yeah. I think that turned a lot of people off, in my opinion, from people who came from other MMOs, especially to give it a mm-hmm. shot. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. I mean, the, the Destiny content vault was a very that was a very controversial thing in the community when they when they announced that they were going to be like sunsetting, you know, weapons and sunsetting equipment and, and sunsetting um, entire expansions. That was like a, that was a big deal because it's like, well, hey, listen, you paid for this and now they're going right. to take it away. And that makes a ton of sense, especially for somebody who's taken breaks from it or, or like who, who put it down for a while. But I remember like. I don't know. Destiny is such a weird beast because it is this PvP PvE hybrid. And so like every change that is made, um, every change that's made to the sandbox, to the way certain systems works affects all sort like there's a balance kind of that needs to be considered, right? Yeah, so like whenever there's a really bad job of that, honestly. Well, it's, a, it's it's just not possible. It's like a, you can't it's a, yeah, exactly yeah. you need different tool sets for each mode for like right. PvP and PvE, you need completely different moves to make them yeah. make sense. Which, and that's which, a balancing nightmare. That's yeah, which why means no one basically, does it. Yeah, which means basically that you kind of have to like... Because in the, initially in the early stages of Destiny, they really wanted to have this like balance of like, okay, they wanted to continue their legacy of like making like really competitive first-person shooters. Um, but they also wanted to do this, uh, you know, PvE, PvP online kind of hybrid thing. And it was it can it became pretty clear that like there was only a certain way that that was going to work, and that was in like the the gear grind and like you know build crafting and stuff like that. And it's like, listen, you're going to have to put your foot down on making uh, a campaign or uh, you know a single player PVE experience that is fun at the expense of making the PVP a complete cluster flock, uh, a mm-hmm. complete cluster flock. So like, just do it. And that's kind of what what it's it's been really like. Destiny PVP is not balanced at all, and. I think people don't mind it at this point. It is kind of like turn your brain off, kind of run around and shoot big light at people. <laughs> you know, it's not really, yeah. it's not the most thought provoking PVP stuff, but like that, I mean, it's beside the point. Like, I, I think the point that I was trying to make is even just the way the sandbox has evolved over time, the power creep that is, mm-hmm. that has kind of attached itself to destiny in, in its systems and in its gameplay the original if you played the original destiny 2 campaign the the red war campaign with your current move set and the way that the game is currently built it's completely broken because it's not designed mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not designed for this for this move set like you, get, you there's like grappling hooks and people are flying on on fucking st- st- uh, you know silver surfer boards you can run it like mach 10 like it 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 breaks the game entirely. And that, that's kind of the nature of a live game where it's like, okay, well, how do you fix that? It's like, you kind of can't. You kind of have to either separate those into a separate skew, which becomes kind of confusing. And I understand why they wouldn't go mm-hmm. that route. Or, or you just, you kind of get rid of it. And, and I know the people who are playing Destiny for a really, really long time. If you were playing Destiny like periodically, like regularly, like as a weekly basis, the removal of old assets and old maps and old campaigns was not a concern for you. You were actually pretty happy about it because it's just like, well, what is this planet wasting gigs on my hard drive if I'm never going to it? We already it doesn't make sense to play through this with like the current move set, like get rid of it. But if you're mm-hmm. a returning player, if you're somebody who's like kind of like wants to dabble into it, that's a that is a huge red flag. Mm-hmm. And so it, it it speaks to this kind of um dichotomy between like what destiny players want and what people on the outside need to dip their feet in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that those, those demands and those wants have never aligned. Yep. Completely. Cause as, as, cause as a destiny player, this, yeah. Yeah. Cause as a destiny player, like get, get the red war, the fuck out of my file size. Mm-hmm. Like I, I am never <laughs> playing the red war again, but it sucks that people cannot play through that, at least in some like separate skew and some like maybe separate, maybe like a, like a something yeah like a separate mm-hmm. download like but then mm-hmm. like imagine undertaking that imagine like having like a separate skew for like every single destiny campaign that is separate from the main game that then has to balance but then like also like keep a very specific update from like a very specific time that has like very specific assets and very mm-hmm. it's it's mm-hmm. weird it's mm-hmm. it's a weird problem and and it's it speaks to the just what they're trying to build with destiny which is just not the most cohesive and and most possible thing to build but it exists regardless and it 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 exists despite itself yeah that's what that's what destiny is 
even if it's not balanced, Chris, I think I'd rather just have it be there for I can just go through. Even if I'm like extremely overpowered or doing shit that's ridiculous, you know, it doesn't make sense. This environment wasn't designed for that in mind. Just being able to go through it, though, I would appreciate that a lot. Sure. Especially yeah. if they added like scaling or something like that. They could easily do that for difficulty. Yeah. But I, I guess imagine going back and retroactively like e- even if just something's like, oh, there's there's we didn't account for people being able to grapple hook across the map like we added in yeah. this expansion. So there are no invisible walls in this section of the map that prevent the game from breaking. How do we do that? Um, mm-hmm. Oh, we have to Tur- we have to we have to dedicate development time to these old expansions that nobody's buying. It, it's just kind of like I, yeah. I see the problem that they're that they're left with. I agree with you, though. Um, no one's be, buying. I would them prefer because... to just have a broken one. No one's buying them because they've been trained to not to buy them and to treat them as irrelevant content. That's why no one's doing them. In 14, all that stuff is treated as relevant content. You have to actually go through the all the expansions to get caught mm-hmm. up to the current content. So if you sure. want to make... Yeah. But I know it's a ridiculous task, but do they have things, Chris, that encourage in the game, you know, to re, for them to reuse old content? Do they do stuff like that, like events? Yeah, they yeah, they have. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, they they have. They bring back uh, certain locations uh, for mm-hmm. like new. Um, okay, that's new cool. Events and and stuff yeah. like that. Like they, there's, they've definitely like returned to older places with like updated stuff. It's just a matter of like, um, I don't know. You're so strong at Destiny Two now. Like the the, the Destiny Two vanilla campaign would be a joke. Yeah, you crush it. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> so, but I yeah, miss I it know. though. I love that campaign. It was, it was great. It was the whole reason why I love Destiny 2 in the first place, you know. And yeah, to be clear, for people, if they, they're wondering like where I dropped off, it was Shadowkeep. Uh, I, after Shadowkeep, I just stopped playing. Um, yeah. And then that Shadowkeep was around was... the time they started vaulting things. And I was like, well, I can't. I don't know how, how, how to get back in. You know, I, I, I don't. I, I love Destiny. I, I miss playing Destiny. I'm, I'm, we're talking about Destiny right now, and I'm considering reinstalling it. But, you know, it's going to be it's going to be the worst experience. You know, I'd rather be playing yeah. Nikkei Goddess of Victory, you know, at the yeah. point, you know, I guess I guess my bad. question <laughs> before we move on, because I know we're taking a lot of time on this, like very specific niche kind of thing. Oh, Take your time. Uh, my, my one question, I guess, for Final Fantasy 14, because I, I have no I don't even know what that game mm-hmm. looks like. I have no I have mm-hmm. no concept for what that game is. Mm-hmm. Um, has has the base like has the core fundamental of like original and by original, I mean like original re- Redux. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah. Um, is it drastically different from where it is today as far as like in the same way that D1 is from D2? I, I think Gene has a better I- idea of like the comparison between these two things. Like mm. would would vanilla Final, fi- Final Fantasy fourteen content be broken by the changes that have been made to it so far? No, in the same it way, it wouldn't break it. Not in realm, not before before Realm Reborn. Yes, that doesn't even exist anymore because it's a shithole. But mm. anything from Realm Reborn out and onward is you can do every single thing in those games because they have. And yes, uh, some of the older stuff might be a little easier to do now because your characters just have so much more utility than they did back in the day. Yeah, but you could still do all that old content. If you want to, it's still all there, at least. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't uh, break. It's just new classes and maybe, you know, new, new like, livelihood stuff that you can do, right? Um, and yeah. New moves and new combinations. Uh, I, I can't really speak to this because I only play base <laughs> A Realm Reborn. So I actually have, okay. no, all right. n- yeah. have no idea what the DLC actually does to the game. But the fact that you can just k- keep playing, it, it's like, it's, it's got to be the, 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 the exact same experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess yeah. the only thing I would say is, like, it... it Vanilla D D two and and D two as it is now, it's it's like going from Gears of War one to Spider Man, as, mm, as yeah. far as as far as like I the see. sheer movement difference. And yeah, just or like, like or like trying to play Halo Combat Evolve with the Halo Infinite grappling hook, probably. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a great. That's actually a great way to put it. Yeah, it would yeah. completely like it's so devastating to the underpinning design of that original expansion that it would it it would be you would have to have it as a separate skew. Yeah, like yeah, imagine being able to just be. do the silent cartographer with a grappling hook. Like it would just you it would, you would you would speed run it. You know, it would yeah, fucking trivial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To this uh, greater point, um, there's a Bloomberg article going around written by Jason Schreier about what's going on. It's specifically framed around the, the project payback, which we'll talk about a little more in depth later. But yeah, um, he says, "quote Fans have wondered if Bungie might one day start anew with Destiny Three, but uh, as we noted, such a project has not been in development, according to the people familiar." 
Bungie is instead looking to create a smoother onboarding process for Destiny 2, such as a rebranding to attract new players who might be turned off by a game that can now feel impenetrable to those unfamiliar with its ample proper nouns. So Mm -hmm. they know. And I, I thought I read it. I don't know if it's in this article or another one that I guess each successive expansion has sold less. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, no matter Ooh. the quality, I guess. So even Final it. Shape sold less than the one that was that everyone Might hated. Fall. Right. Fall, yeah. That's how I understand it. Now, it's not not being given enough time. And I was I was watching the Sony as one does. I was watching the Japanese Sony financial um, presentation and they did show <laughs> a graphic for the Final Shape, like bragging about it. So they must hmm. be happy with it or whatever. But they also were talking about how good Concord's going to be in that same presentation. Oh, yeah. It, it, um, it still could be. Who knows? We well, no, yeah, I, that's unfair. It, it could be good and it probably will yeah. be good, but mm-hmm. will it do well? That's more what they were talking about. <laughs> yeah. It, um, yeah. All right. I wanted to talk about the business of the deal um, just because I'm fascinated by this and I, I'm curious what you guys think of this. So in that article and it was reported, I don't know if it was reported in a separate Jason Trier report from Bungie because he seems to be pretty well connected to this um, to this ongoing story over years, really, is that they missed their internal revenue uh, goals last year by 45 percent. And this goes to just show which which, by the way, I mean, just to put this into terms like that would kill a lot of companies, completely kill them. Mm-hmm. You would be unable to pay your debts. You would be un- unable to borrow more money. It would be unless you're like trying to be a loss leader, ha- have a loss leader or like really chase a goal like Amazon losing money for 20 years. Like you're not built to do that. And and it's that's why I was saying earlier how lucky they are that a, a, they have a benefactor basically now. Um, and the benefactor seems to be kind of have been bamboozled because the only way you like miss those kinds of revenue targets is if people are drastically wrong. It has nothing to do with the product. I don't think like these. It's strange to me how obvious it is. And again, it's suggested in some of this reporting that this was clearly oversold to Sony. And there were also people kind of sniffing around. Microsoft was apparently sniffing around. There were rumors right in 2021. Um, And so I just don't know how Sony got the rug pulled out from under them like this. Like this is a bad, in my opinion, like such a bad look because they can't deploy this level of capital. Remember when Sony was investigating buying paramount they were going to do it with a like a a, an investment firm because they didn't have the money like so spending and that was eight billion i think and they spent 3.6 billion on this like this is to put this in the context for people this deal and chris and i have gone over this with with dustin on the on the main show is this deal is we don't have all the numbers public but is conceivably worth more than every acquisition playstation had ever made combined like that's how much money they just spent and what distresses me are two things. One is like who this Pete Parsons guy is and how he's still in place and why. And I would be really yeah. curious to know what you guys think. There's got to be a reason and it can't be something like vested money or whatever, because again, Schreier reports that people that were unvested at Bungie that got fired, lost all of the inv- lost all of the that money. So um I don't know that it would have to do with that necessarily. I don't know if it's because he has like deep systemic knowledge that they're going to need or that they feel like they're going to need, but certainly you would imagine that he would be the person at the tip of the spear that was at the the lead of misrepresenting the situation to such a degree. And Mm -hmm. that's Sony's problem. That's not our problem, but in some sense it's our problem as PlayStation players because Sony is now not doesn't, they could have invested that money in a bunch of different ways, not even acquisitions, but just doing new games with the teams that they already have and expanding teams. They already have. So I really want to get into what you guys think is going on from this business front and um, who this Pete Parsons person is from your perspective. And like, and and I guess speaking to my major concern, and Chris, I'll go to you first, I suppose, is sure. um, we've said this on and on on the show is Sony it bought this studio for their expertise and their talent. And now they're taking the team over it. They talk right. about it on, in the um in the presentation and then financial presentation for the Q1 financials where they're like, we're going to, they, he says, I actually, uh, it's not on a document I have up right now. I wrote it down where, um, Totoki said something along the lines of like anything that has nothing to do with like, it, they're only going to be making video games, everything else we're taking away from them. So they, they're being incorporated and, right. and even part of them split into a proper first party team. And it just seems to defeat the purpose as the joke has been going around lately. The guy that made kill zone, which was supposed to be the Halo killer is now in charge of Bungie, right? Yeah, yeah it's like it's, it's something amusing. has gone seriously wrong here. Yeah. Um, so, what do you think? 
I don't know. I, I think um, I think this is one of those weird situations where it's like, yes, they did acquire the studio for the talent, and I I think. The, the the biggest shame of this is that they're going to they're, that they've lost so much talent as a result of the layoff. Really, is 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 like kind of the the key takeaway for me because ultimately, even if they get somebody else or they get other people like from Sony in charge of like you know managerial stuff or like business reality stuff, you still have the the talent that you ultimately wanted. Really, like uh, you lost some key people for sure, but the dev team at Bungie that exists there like is. It's sincerely like cream of the crop shit. Like they know what they're doing as far as like making games. Um, it's just a matter of like obviously managing. The uh, The problem with Bungie has always been upper management. It, it's always been the people making it like this goes back to like interviews that Marty O'Donnell used to give. But like when he when he left Bungie, how he I remember he was talking. He was talking about a meeting that they had with Activision, how, you know, he was he was um, like when they made the deal to pursue Destiny or, or partner with Activision. He was talking about a meeting that they had where uh he was trying to explain to them it's like he has this golden goose philosophy it's a little corny but like it's it it makes sense where it's like you got to be nice to the golden goose so it can keep you know laying the golden egg like the the team is what's important it's not the you know you can't focus on the product you got to focus on the health of the team is basically the idea and one of the activision uh executives turned to him was like yeah but sometimes there's nothing like there's nothing like a nice foie gras and it's like what the fuck <laughs> like that's not a that's not a red that's not a red flag to you that that maybe this is not the ideal you know place to be um yeah and so like the, the the decision of where they go has always been like you know fraught with curious intent and, and curious wisdom and this pete parsons guy i mean he's been bu with bungie for a while but he's he's specifically talent from microsoft you know he was i think an executive producer from microsoft and then he became like a studio manager and then i think he he joined fully i think Sometime during the Halo era, but he's a Microsoft guy, which is probably why he was able to finagle such a crazy deal. He joined in 2002. Yeah. So he joined in 2002. So like right, right around the time that Halo Combat Evolved was done, and uh, you know, basically out the door. Mm. Um, and so you know, he's been there for a while. He knows the studio pretty intimately, I would imagine, and that has some level of importance for sure. But this is, at the end of the day, a, a Microsoft guy. You know, like he he came from Microsoft, and and that's that's his culture, and it and it appears, you know, it appears that that culture has followed till to today, where he's able to finagle like the craziest deal ever by like just completely misleading uh, Sony and overselling, um, or at least being a key member in those meetings for sure. So I don't know. The, the community has never felt particularly great about Pete Parsons. I will say that. Like he's always been kind of like this, like outsider. Even 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 though he was there through the entire Halo era, he always felt like, like from a community standpoint, and even from like a you know an ex dev, you know standpoint, who are you know ex Bungie devs are not silent. You know they're they're very vocal, and uh, they're not fans of this guy. Yeah, it's interesting to. It's interesting to find like to hear about people's journeys and also consider how they found their their way into making decisions for such a huge organization. Um, certainly has like some level of talent, but it's just weird yeah. that from my perspective that they don't just part ways with this person and, and, and promote someone else from within unless they just don't feel like they don't they have the requisite talent anymore to do so. Um, Brad, where are you on this? How do you feel about the whole P Parsons thing and this 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 idea we know now that Totoki last quarter was like during the fiscal year presentation was talking about accountability at Bungie, mm -hmm. like that they're unaccountable. And I find yeah. that so interesting because didn't Sony do any due diligence? They don't buy anything. It's just so strange. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think they should just get rid of Pete. His head needs to roll, man. <laughs> he's been not doing good with directing this company like the company like Bungie is his responsibility he is like the top guy everything goes to him and all this failures should fall on him I'm highly confident Sony could find someone to fill in that slot someone to get a Bungie they need they need a new head change for sure and I don't <laughs> I think this whole Bungie acquisition was so weird because this was prime Sony trying to get into life service territory on their timeline and I think they were they jumped the gun on this. Like you said, Colin, like they didn't it seemed like they didn't do their due diligence, which is very weird. And they just kind of rushed into this whole deal and they got bamboozled. 
big time in the end. Now they're having to clean up all their messes. I think this whole thing's been a fucking mess, frankly. It's been kind of like embarrassing for Sony to like fuck up that bad. Make that big of an investment and have it just turn into this is really bad. Especially if like this advice they gave Naughty Dog about Factions 2 was from people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. It's like, I don't know. How long are you going to let these people who don't know what they're doing, who keep continuously fuck shit up, keep going? You got to get these people out of here. You got to do something. You got to make a statement. And it sounds like Herman Holst is like, you know, in charge of Bungie now. But someone's got to I think someone's got to fall for this. Yeah, I mean, someone's got to die. All right. They're (laughs) they're too big to to not have their own super dedicated leadership structure that's kind of still parallel to SIE because they're just not they're too big to be a a true first uh, first party team in the st- the old style of PlayStation team right. and yet it's interesting because uh with um the first party structure I just feel like maybe the due diligence was just different because they relied so unlike some of these other smaller teams that they've bought and brought in that do run as separate businesses they have kind of publisher associations they're not out there on their own and so more is just known and there's just more interaction between entities. And when you become a company like Bungie, you're kind of just you're floating out there on your own. But I think that there's like signs in the ether of not wanting to do business with these guys in some sense. I mean, what happened with Activision was clearly acrimonious, right? It There wasn't much made about it because I, I think Activision chose not to fight about it. But I also think that there was an uncanny there was an uncanny identification that like this thing is run its course or it's going to become more difficult now we want out of this and the signs were there like letting them take the ip that's so weird that's like totally unheard of you know yeah like without no one no one wanted to think anything was wrong with Bungie in that situation because everyone hates activision right because you know they fuck so much shit up but then we also know that they really weaseled their way it's not weaseling it's business but it's like they got out of their deal with microsoft too i mean you know, mm-hmm. back in the day and promised a number of games to kind of get their independence out and work on something else, which is why I think it's somewhat commendable that they didn't do something like Destiny 3, that they wanted to make something new because I think they identified truth too that there's like, we need to move on or we can become a riot or something where we focus on this one thing or this one world and try and then get lucky and have Valorant all these years later and so on and so forth. But um well, va- they're doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That that <clears throat> le- le- like it took them a long time for, to go from League to a, a Valorant. Oh yeah, and, Valorant doing an MMO, right? Doing a fighting now they game. have the fighting yeah. game and all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't. I think that's actually. I, I interviewed uh, an old friend of mine, Leah Jackson, is a producer there. I don't know if she's still there or not, actually. But when Fireside Chats was still going on, I interviewed her about working at Riot, and that was one of the things I was talking to her about then. Was mm-hmm. don't you feel? And this was like Valorant was probably not even in development at this point. And I was like, right. but it maybe it was like early on internally. And I was like, don't, aren't you guys scared? You know? And I think that if you're out there on your own, that's like kind of a reasonable fear to like want to have something new, but they just, they botched it, you know? Um, yeah. Anyway, Gene, I haven't heard from you in a while. What do you, what do you think about this whole accountability thing in Pete Parsons and their, and how they fit into Sony's culture and all of the rest? Yeah, I agree that uh, Parsons' head should roll, um, but it, th- this situation sounds deeply familiar. And again, I'm relating it back to the Washington Post, but it does that there is a parallel. Um, Jeff Bezos, well, I don't want to say he fired him, but um, Fred Ryan was our former publisher, um, and he is the former chief of staff to Ronald Reagan. Uh, Fred Ryan uh, managed, uh, he was the president and CEO of the Washington Post from 2014 to last year, 2023. But in 2022, we lost, uh, reportedly by the New York Times, $100 million in revenue and, 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 and just profits, right? And apparently, reportedly, a bunch of us at the Washington Post, not me, I wasn't part of this effort, but a bunch of us uh, 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 emailed Jeff Bezos and be like, please, pay attention, do something, you know, yeah. and it took a long time, but, but he finally retired, you know? So I think in corporate America, there's just this like real reticence to, to just fire a CEO, you know? And he wasn't just, he, he wasn't fired. He, he was able to resign and he was given tens of millions of dollars and he continues to be chairman of the Ronald Reagan uh, presidential uh, foundation where he was, give, where Jeff Bezos made a, a huge donation to help, you know, Ryan continue on. So, 
it's always a golden parachute for these folks, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bobby yeah. Kotick, uh, 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 everyone hates him. Everyone thinks he's a terrible person, but you know, he he still rode away, rode off into the sunset and, and and got all the money, right? Dude, he made so much money that he was he's one of the companies that's trying to buy TikTok, or like one of the entities that like wants to if they divest if ByteDance divest from TikTok, that yeah, it, oh, that's he right. He wants to that's, be one of the buyers, you know. That's right. Yeah, he's st- he's still out there being a player, you know, which is, crazy. Um, which is incredible, yeah. you know. So like the, 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 uh, all of our complaining and 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 ed- editorials and tweets did nothing you know uh the, yeah. and so we can talk all day about pete parsons uh uh, uh that, that needs to go and he needs to be held accountable and he probably should you know but uh, in the end sony needs to just just like like just tighten up and 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 understand that, they, that this is something that they have to do you know it's gonna hurt yeah I they guess. have to but you know ultimately this guy led a, a failing company and it was a failing strategy you know yeah they're bleeding out right now Mm-hmm. They got to do something drastic like that. Like these cuts they've been doing are drastic. But like you got to cut some of the top who are making all the calls. Mm-hmm. Like you just have to. Mm-hmm. Your corporate, your company won't change unless you change some of the head or the higher ups. You have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just got to be brave enough to. Yeah, if I was Sony, I'd be pissed. I, if oh, ever, if I was Sony, like the single entity, I'd be like, you, you fucking, you fucking yeah, sold you're us a, a piece of shit. You know, Fuck yeah, you're you. gone, dude. Yeah, I, I, doing, I, I imagine he's doing a bad cool. job at he's doing a bad job. Yeah. Like how long are you supposed to let him keep doing a shit job? Yeah. I imagine it's like there's Phil a Spencer lot of fury about, about that. You know, that they really did get kind of sold a they false did. bill of sale. They got they got bamboozled so hard. And it's and ridiculous. It, and it's worth noting because I, I want to be fair and I see you know things being said. It's like Microsoft also vastly overpaid for Activision. The difference mm-hmm. is that Activision is gonna pay for itself. Like Yes, that that, will. that still will turn out pretty well, I think, from from Microsoft. Like there, there's no, there's little evidence yeah. that this actually will pan out. Like, and yeah. and what I mean by that is that I don't think Bungie is going anywhere, anywhere, but it feels like Bioware in some sense, where it's like Bioware exists, but and maybe Dragon Age will lead some sort of major resurgence of the brand. I'm doubtful personally, but um, maybe maybe it will. I'm sure it's going to sell millions of copies and. And yeah. do well enough, but Bioware is not Bioware anymore. And yeah. but it still exists. And bu- I feel like Bungie's kind of entering that that stage where it's like, well, who yeah. gives a shit, really? I mean, yeah, what man. have you done for me recently? And there's, there's also the that, conversation- there was also that weird thing about a uh, marathon being switched out because I, re- I remember originally Christopher Barrett, who was like a, a really uh, storied Bungie guy, was mm-hmm. like the lead of Marathon, and then it switched to I think was it a va- like an like an ex valorant dev or something like mm. it was one of those one of those games i can't remember but like i got switched over to that and it's like oh man something something's weird something weird's going on right. um, there's a whole conversation uh in gaming circles about the 3 b's uh and and how they yeah. they've all fallen off you know it's bethesda bioware and bungie uh the three mm-hmm. companies that 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 revitalized and energized western uh the western gaming uh uh development uh Certainly. Scene, you know uh, it was Halo. It was Bun- It was uh, Mass Effect and Dragon Age, and it was Oblivion and and Skyrim that really, really and Fallout and that that really, really changed uh, the kind of focus for the entire gaming industry, right? In the early two thousands, definitely. And look yeah. at where they are now. They're 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 they're, they're a husk of their former selves. You know? Yeah, it's it's hard to keep those things together. The one thing I want to say, and people got mad at me. We, we even someone even like wrote me a letter about this like saying he was unsubscribing and all that which is fine because i think he misunderstood what i was sa- saying or maybe he didn't and he's just upset about what i was actually saying but like the one thing i'll say is that i think it's weak to attack it's not weak it's it's p parsons is optically blind right like he doesn't understand how things he could be doing comes off but people fixated on the money he spent are missing the forest oh, for the trees right. in my opinion yeah yeah and this I, is something i, I said that. on the show where i was like the amount of money he spent on all those cars and that was stupid and well i don't know do what you want he's very i mean he is very rich very 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 rich you know so right. two million dollars is not a lot of money to a guy like that but it's a lot of money to all of us and i totally get that optically but i made the comment or something like that would have saved 15 people's jobs for one year and someone wrote to me like well, how can you say that you don't you know, ivory tower kind of stuff and i'm like you don't understand what i'm saying dude this isn't about like it's a on on the terms of layoffs and how it affects people on the individual level. That's horrible, but this is about yeah. a sustainable business. And two million dollars is probably what Bungie spends on like the shit in their cafeteria a year. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be a dickhead. Right. What I'm saying is, is that the problem is way bigger 
than Pete Parsons spending two million dollars on cars. For and sure, that's like yeah. a distraction from the yeah, real yeah. the real problem. That a company that had thirteen hundred heads is now eight hundred or seven fifty. Two million dollars doesn't change that at all. And that yeah. was the kind of the point I was trying to make. So like fixate on his optical blindness and fixate on his ineptitude, which and maybe that he was part of the bamboozling of Sony and how you feel about that and all of the rest. But I just hate when people get distracted on like the populist, you know, like, yeah, and he bought these cars. It's like, all right, mm-hmm. dude. Well, I, it, I guess. Yeah. yeah to, to to play devil's advocate, I guess, like the, arg- the argument of like, oh, that would have saved 15 jobs for like a year. It's like, well, that maybe that could have saved like maybe four jobs for far longer and four of those people might have been pretty key people who you would have been better off hanging on to, I guess. It's, it's kind of like the mathematical argument that you could kind of yeah, extrapolate that's from true. that. I don't necessarily agree, but I think like, dude, letting... I know that this wasn't like a... Uh, and again, it's it's kind of all, you know, hearsay at this point because it's, you know, th- the key people who left were not laid off, technically. Like, I'm sure there were uh, pretty key people who were laid off, but... um. You know, Mark Knowsworthy and Luke Smith would have been very well worth those few cars. No, <laughs> I, I agree with that. But I, I also just it's like it's it's <clears throat> like making I know what you're saying, fungible though. in some sense where it's like it's his money and it's for sure. Yeah, I, I just I just feel like people should focus on on like the ineptitude. The optical stuff's interesting, <clears throat> but it doesn't change that he ran Bungie in a way that had it shed hundreds of jobs and that stuff's just a distraction from the core ineptitude. Like cut him off at the head, you know, like if you want and like remove his ability to make that kind of money. It's almost questionable why people don't see it more for what it is, in my opinion, which is like a deeper issue about hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars and how like the systems and the pipelines at Bungie need to change. For sure. You know? Yeah. I I think the point that people are trying to make though is that like, why should a person who run, who's run a, a massive business this poorly even have the disposable income to even afford that. You know what I mean? I don't think it's necessarily well, about that, we that. Agree, that we agree upon. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and that's what I was saying earlier about people just kind of finding their way through and find and just making lots of money. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm more convinced than ever that that happens like at the middle level, you know, like R- P Parsons is not a fucking billionaire, but he's very rich. You know, oh, yeah, he's, he's just fine. Um, anyway, what were you going to say, Gene? I'm sorry. Yeah. There's one thing that I don't see a lot of people talk about and this was reported in ign in december uh, when they were talking about uh what's going on in bungie and everything uh bungie has implemented a bunch of cost cutting measures for employees such as studio-wide hiring fees blah 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 but also delaying its week-long company pentalon event to next year and reducing numerous morale events such as cooking and knitting classes from monthly to quarterly um, also, it's the uh, it's cutting back its new hire lunch program, employee donation matching, its peer recognition program, and gift cards for employee birthdays. So, I the reason why I bring all this up is because what the fuck is, what the fuck kind of company is this that yeah. you have monthly knitting classes and that you are spending that money on that shit, right? I bet yeah, a um, lot of companies have this gene a lot. And where did companies so, love to waste money? Yeah, so so I so it reminds me that the, the the reason why I asked you about the Huffington Post yesterday, Colin, right? Mm. Uh, in our in our gaming forum article is because it reminds me of of when Ariana Huffington decided to implement sleeping rooms in every <laughs> single uh, newsroom at the Huffington Post, where they had little sleep pods where everybody can go like little fucking futuristic eggshells that you go in and you and you just take a nap in there, you know? Yeah. Um, because she was because she was really really fucking like super into the, the the sleeping method or whatever at the time. She has a whole fucking book about sleeping, you know. So it reminds me of this like weird new age shit, where companies are just like like just spending on all kinds of weird stuff to. Well, the, uh, and, yeah. and that's kind of what attracted me to Bungie. I was like, oh my god, they got they have a, they have a cafeteria. Like you mentioned the cafeteria, so I was like I'm sure they have a cafeteria and they have all these other things. And they have I could have been learning knitting knitting by now. You know, I could be. A, a two-year expert knitter if I worked at Bungie and I, and then I would I would be laid off right now. So I mean I so the Pete Parsons thing, like I completely agree with you that that it's it's not it's inconsequential, right? Uh, I, that he can spend however money he wants to spend. But it does kind of speak to the leadership and how they decide to spend money. They love to spend money on mm-hmm. luxurious shit. That, yeah, that I could never even imagine like I don't know. It's 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 just crazy. Like I, I'm so I'm wired so differently 
than these people were. I was like, I would never spend that. No matter how much money I had, I would probably never spend that on anything ever. You know, yeah. like like that. Like, it's like, yeah. It's just at the, Washington, at the Washington Post, we don't have free coffee. You know. You have, yeah, that's you have to get our own, well, you know, that's what I was going to say. Coffee. Was that what you're describing to me is very Silicon Valley bungees in Washington, but it's the same kind of thing where. And I experienced it in my own time in media when we were with Fox and we were kind of riding high. We would have totally catered lunch and dinner uh, like for Friday, like on Fridays, catered lunch and and dinner Mondays, I think like bagels and breakfast or whatever. And then, you know, we would go to movies like every few weeks or every month or so. And we would like do all these things. And then slowly it just went. It's like now no more lunch. Oh, now the movie's quarterly. Oh, now we just get bagels in the morning. And like before you knew it, like everything was gone. And then. You would go to some of these places like Twitch. I used to go to that HQ sometimes and they would ha- they had like everything for free for all their people. And I guarantee you it's not like that anymore. And when I used to go to Patreon, Patreon would g- cater breakfast. As I understand, as I remember, breakfast, lunch and dinner every day. Mm-hmm. And I-, I think it was like just keep your people engaged, happy, healthy. It's like competing at the fringe, you mm-hmm. know, for mm-hmm. people apart from the money. It's like, how else yeah. can we encourage you to stay here? And companies that are focused on that are good, but it it becomes frivolous if you're not wildly successful. That's the stuff that has to go, you know? Yeah. And people yeah. have to understand that. If you work at these companies, that's the unfortunate reality of it. It sucks, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, knitting class is weird. I knew I knew about the pentathlon though for a lot for a lot. They, they, that's been a long bungee tradition. That's been around ever since like, like the early time. bungee days for sure. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah that's yeah. an so annual that, tradition. I get that. But it's the, so it's the, funny the, that that's but like I, I think I think it's important to have moral uh, morale bill. I think for sure, like I think that's important. But like I mean, I don't know, man. Knitting classes, come on. Yeah, you know what? Give me more morale is just paying me more money mm-hmm. instead of spending a bunch of money on dumb bullshit like we're just hiring classes. hiring a better CEO. I think or yeah, or a better CEO, something like that. You know what? You know what? You know what? I would. Uh, I would be very curious, and look, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm way out of date with this information, but I I want to know. I want to hear from Jason Jones. Hmm. You know, hmm. like is is because he's he's a really mysterious guy. So like Jason mysterious. Jones, he's so fucking fascinating. I think he was like one of the most interesting. Is probably one of the reasons I was like so fascinated by the studio so early on, and why I focused so heavily on him. Like, here's this guy who just shows up very like so infrequently but he's like a core part of like what happens you know mm-hmm. like he's like the, the the head of that or like the proverbial head i think he's like chief co- creative director now and he's definitely one of those people like he's definitely like a guy after my own heart where he's like i remember like the old vidocs that i would watch and he, he would just be sitting there be like i'm not a business guy all right you know give give it I, i'm sure that's why Pete parsons is in the position that he's in it's just like listen i i want no part of this <laughs> like this is I don't know why I, I'm in this position. Alex Seropian is is gone, and now I'm like I'm the creative guy, like in charge of the business. Like, please, someone take this. Um, I totally get it, but like he 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 emerges like once every like twelve years. It feels like to give some <laughs> weird interview, and he's just so and he looks completely different every time. He's so interesting. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what he has to say about this. If he's going to say anything about this, like when his next appearance is going to be, like what he looks like now. <laughs> Yeah, he's like the JD Salinger of like first person shooters, you know. Yeah, no, for like at like a hundred percent, like like this is like deep cut, like this is the lower end of the iceberg as far as like anybody who knows about the bungee. It's like this is yeah. like the lower the lower end of it. I'm with you, it's man. So, but it's so he's so interesting, and like he 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 comes out, you know, in the early Halo days, looking like a fresh faced college guy, and then he reemerges like in the Destiny era, looking like a samurai. Like it's crazy. <laughs> He looks like the last boss of like Blade Runner, you know. Like- he, he looks, he looks like Sekiro, <laughs> and, it's, and it's like, and it's like, what happened? <laughs> That's funny, you know. Yeah, he's like the he's like the white guy in Neo, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would love to hear like I, I don't know I, a, any anything that's not radio silence from Jason Jones would be fascinating. But I, I also kind of I, I don't even know if he's at the studio anymore. Like I, I assume he is. But he's one of those people where, like, if he left, you wouldn't know about it somehow, despite mm-hmm. the fact that he's like super important. So, like, I, mm-hmm. I don't even, I don't even know. Yeah, Wikipedia still lists him, lists, lists him as CC, CCO, but yeah, yeah he's yeah. so fucking quiet that you don't, you never know, you know. He's yeah. in your room right now. Yeah, is Jason Jones here with us right now? Uh, Colin, uh, I'm yeah. curious. Do you know for how, for how long uh, Bungie's been like losing money? Essentially, their downfall. How long it's, has it been? 
it's unclear. Like my assumption is based on their headcount, which was over a thousand when Sony acquired them, and where Destiny Two was in its cycle and people's interaction with it. I assume that they were profitable at that time because I don't know why Sony would would buy an unprofitable entity with no future plan of how to fix it, unless they really bought in on Marathon or wh- what? What year I really assume, buy so I should just take an aside here and just say. What I really assume happened at some level is these guys really selling themselves is like you are behind the times and you need our help. You know? Yeah. And yeah, hundred percent. So I think that. So that was twenty twenty two, and so I think um, we know for sure that when it was presented last year in twenty twenty three, that they were in the red at that time, and so it must have happened in between that time and, they and then. S- but it might have been at the very beginning too. I mean, I'm just making the assumption that. They might have been in the red and said, like, this is the plan to get out. But when you miss your your revenue by 45 percent, that that becomes a problem. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Life that all t- is was was brutal, man. Yeah. That timeline of them being bought makes me think they were still on covid mode, essentially, with all those employees they had. They had a lot of fat that they didn't need essentially anymore. So they probably held on to a lot of them for a long time and lost a lot of money. And like Chris said, Lightfall was brutal, but all of them have been selling less and less was what according to what you guys said earlier. Well, yeah, I I mean, the the key differentiator, though, is like an expansion. So because it's a live service game, like you can have an expansion that sells like less, but you can theoretically make more money if more attention is drawn to the game as a result of it. You know what I mean? So it's like right. it's, it's, a, it's a weird system that they have set up. The thing is, though, your player base isn't growing and you're just bleeding dry more of your diehard fans. Yep. No, 100 percent. I, that can only last probably for so long for so many people. Yeah, it's it's definitely like it would it would have that's like inertia at a certain point. Like you're just moving on inertia basically at that point. And it's yeah. like it'll slowly trickle down. And, you know, life all being as bad as it was and unrecommendable as it was, like didn't help Final Shape at all. I'll tell you that much. Right, like, that's I mean, true. Even if Final Shape is, you know, Final Shape is fucking fantastic. But, you know, if the last one sucks, like there's, there's going to be like way fewer people jumping into it because they're going to be they're going to be lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of so. like uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake, remake and Rebirth uh, uh, conversation, right? Rebirth sold less, right? I think right. it's mm-hmm. probably a, a consequence of people just didn't like remake. So they're like, fuck it. I don't want to play part two. Yeah, yeah. It's not a movie. First of all, like it's it's an invest, like more of an investment. So I feel like people are not going to necessarily some people are willing to skip movies and like just watch something. Yeah, I feel like yeah. gaming is just less that. And yeah, Final Fantasy VII Remake was, in my opinion, awesome, but still divisive. So you're going to start from a smaller pool. Plus, PS4 doesn't have the user base. Um, oh, PS5 doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Or PS5, I'm sorry, PS5 doesn't. Yeah, right. Uh, that PS4 yeah. did yeah, that's at the same point in time. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is yeah, yeah. relevant. Yeah, um, it was at the it was at the end of the PS4's life, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like the it last does, year. Yeah. So certain, certain things can be like so good and it doesn't really... Like the first, the first, um, like barring any kind of like unforeseen, like crazy success, usually the first iteration of something is probably going to be like the height. You know what I mean? It's, it, I think of like Spider Man and Spider Man Two, where it's like Spider Man One, I think grossed like eight hundred and something, eight hundred something million, and then Spider Man Two was like seventy nine or seven hundred uh, ninety five million, mm-hmm. which is less. But Spider Man Two is way better. You know, so it's like we'll see, we'll see how it, we'll see how things shake up. But like, up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a shame. Um, I wanted to ask you guys about how you feel about Sony kind of doing a two like a two pronged pillage of Bungie talent in some sense, and um, if you mm. think this will benefit Bungie and make them leaner, or if Sony's kind of silently mining them with future plans of getting at like people used to make fun of me when I was like, so, you know, I said it like a year ago, right, Chris, I was like, Sony should just sell this at like a loss and just get out of this now. You know, and <laughs> now that looks like looks like that might have even been a wise decision as well, although doubling down and trying to see what you can extract out of this is good, too. But here's what happened for people that don't know is that um, I guess this game is codenamed Gummy Bears. This is an internal game that Bungie had been, um, I guess, maturing and getting off the ground alongside a series of other incubation projects Mm -hmm. and sony has spun this and is i guess in the process of spinning this team into playstation studios as a new first party to kind of just make this game so i want to know what you guys think of that and then the other thing is is that and i i had it up here although i don't know if i still do that sony is going to take i guess another 150 or so people um 155 people from Bungie and bring them to SIE itself 
So mm. they're taking about 200 people from Bungie and sprinkling them about. So what do we think of this? Does this strike any of you as interesting or notable? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. No, no. I, I mean, um, I, I think it's this is highly unusual as far as I'm like, I, I don't I can't think of a, I no point in, in history is coming to mind where this has happened. I'm, maybe maybe this is something that is like relatively common, but like I've never I've never heard of this uh, specifically. Uh, but I mean, I think it's I think it's kind of cool. I, I think it makes sense to extract what you can out of Bungie because like, yeah, I mean, the idea is there to sell, I guess you get rid of them and, and kind of get get out of this deal. But I think even even Sony as as probably frustrated and, and bitter as they are that they've overpaid for this thing understands the value of the talent that is there, even if even if prime talent has left. Um, that is a good studio. And if they have something worth building, which they almost certainly do. Uh, yeah, it makes sense to be like, OK, well, this is great. Um, we're going to take this and own it fully. Um, you know, that's just kind of a, a wise business move as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, Bungie Talent's good talent. So uh, it's it's definitely interesting, though. What do you think, Brad? Yeah, I, I agree with Chris. It is unusual, but I think it's really exciting, actually, to yeah. see whatever this new project is that's coming out. Because personally, like, I think Bungie's cool. I mean, Destiny's cool, but I've lost interest in it, and I want them. To, I wanted to see them do something different. Like, even if it's still like a sci-fi shooter or something like that. That's totally fine. But I just want to see what they could cook up from a smaller team right now. Like, this team could obviously grow humongous as development continues but i think it's a really great idea and i'm and those people at least like at least a lot of them found other jobs they didn't get thrown to the curb right away so i'm happy about that like what they're going to do at sie in general i don't know but i think it was an interesting idea to take this talent because the t- bungie does have a lot of talent and not waste them so hopefully they kept all the right people for that kind of stuff and they probably yeah. feel like they did i think um I'm, I'm just as a first party person, like, and, and someone interested in the first party and its growth and its history. It's interesting that they'll be coming in too, because there seems that seems to be a the third kind of unknown team that seems to exist, and it's going to be very yeah. exciting. I think when these teams are are revealed, maybe they'll be one of them will be revealed, not this one, but one of the other two at the uh, PS5 Pro event whenever that happens, because uh, we know that. Jason Blundell is working on a game for Sony internally, right? And leading some sort of team, which I'm the more I think about it, the more you imagine that what happened is. And again, this is just my hypothesis. I have no idea really is deviation was making this game in a second party capacity. They didn't, there was something fundamentally wrong with that operation, but there's a sound idea with good talent working on it. Sony has, probably ownership over the ip and can really do whatever it wants certain milestones or whatever takes the game deviation loses its funding and then a bunch of those guys end up at sony because they do um yeah on this team that has yet to be revealed so i wonder what the deal is with that that's kind of the first idea and the second one is that i just i refuse to believe that there's not an uncharted game in development it just seems obvious but obviously hasn't been revealed other than that live action trailer that seems to show. Yeah. I see Drake. There's no way they're going to let that IP go. I agree, yeah. especially with the success of the movie and all of that. And I just think it's something that games take so long now that you could really always have an uncharted game in development. It's like it bothers me that series like God of War, which I, I know people love and I, I appreciate that, too. But it's like we're going to have these perpetual series. And un- if we're going to do that with a few of them, then Uncharted has to be one of those, in my in my mm-hmm. opinion. So. It's exciting to think that there's a third of those in, the, in that in that yeah. cycle with I'm, this new Bungie team. Do we know anything about this Gummy Bears game? There's that image going around that people purport to be it, but I don't know. Oh, I, I didn't actually see that. Um, but uh, I'll see if I can th- find. They've it. always had they've always had weird code names for their stuff, and like th- there's always been like misinformation posted about it. I think intentionally, internally, like right. just to confuse. So like, it, I mean, it could be anything. I, I, I'm do, I'm always very curious about like whatever Bungie's working on. I'm, I'm very interested to see how Marathon shakes up. Whatever this is going to be, I'm totally all over it. I think they make games in an interesting way that like speaks to me. So we'll see what it is. But I, I'm kind of more curious as to what the name is going to be because like, and, and it's not as interesting as like what the game's going to be, obviously. But like at this point in time, my curiosity is, are they going to stick with 
like is it going to be like a new name or is it going to be like are they going to leverage the fact that like you kind of you I feel like if you spin a team off of Bungie you kind of want to let people know even if like even if you know this deal was a mess and like Bungie is like in this tumultuous situation right now and Destiny is like going through whatever I feel like having a splash screen with Bungie on it in some capacity, even if it's like Bungie, like back in the day, they had Bungie West. Even if it's something like that, like that would be pretty exciting or interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how they would feel about it or like what the deal structure is there necessarily, but I don't know. I kind of hope it's still like a, like a Bungie thing. Um, Maybe, maybe it can reference. I know we've been questioned, we've questioned in the past and I think reasonably so like the three, four, three, the coalition um, where it's like, you're tying yourself into a specific franchise, but maybe there's some bungee lore or something like some, <laughs> yeah. t- some name you can pull that will yeah. not call you bungee, but, but call that connection out in some way. Yeah. Just a destiny. Welcome to Atheon times conflux studios, the traveler studios. <laughs> Traveler's kind of dope actually, but um, yeah, Gene, I don't know what to. I don't know what to make of this image, by the way. Like, I, oh I yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, that's right. I'm sorry. I put it here in the Reddit. That this, this is from last year. Mm-hmm. This image, but this image had been circulated more recently as being what people are connecting to the game that they've saved. And this is says it's codenamed Gummy Bears from this image that's a year ago. And then Bloomberg's article says that the team that they are going to work with is on the incubation of the codename Gummy Bear. So this is it, I think. Um, yeah, but it's maybe. just it's just character art. It's not you know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Not much to say about it. Uh, Gene, what are your thoughts here on the poaching of um, of Bungie? I actually think this is a, a sign of Sony making this work, trying to make this work in some way, getting some sort of benefit out of it without having to support this bloated team and let them just kind of work on Marathon and go on with destiny too. And I want to talk to you guys about that in a little while too, but um, Mm -hmm. yeah. What are your thoughts here? I don't know. Yeah. Look, I saw the image of gummy bears and I'm looking at right now. Uh, There's a cat surfing. There's like two girls, like one black, one white. They got backpacks on. They look funky. There's a chicken person and someone's uh, uh, diving down with an umbrella. Um, And then the tweets uh, that were, where they were hiring for these, these games is incubation and bungee is focused on developing inclusive worlds which takes time and team members with diverse backgrounds so we're actually actively hiring fully remote roles um that to me kind of sounds like that they they're interested in this game because it's in line with the same mentality that that produced uh, concord mm. uh which concord yeah. has all of these like diverse characters and everything yeah. like that and it's like okay well we need to we need to diversify sony's uh uh, uh creative output that doesn't that isn't a, a 50 year old dad that's really angry about stuff, right? Um, so I, I really, really do think that like well, whatever they were making with this really is kind of in line. Well, what we we have to be more inclusive, and we have to have all kind. It has to be colorful. It has to be G rated, whatever. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, dunking on the idea. I'm just saying that I think that that's where the mentality was uh, in terms of. Right. I, I think you're right. I think, uh, dude, well, I, I, I want to just that. say real quick, it's 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 funny you say that just because again, I listened to Sony's pre- or Sony's financial um, presentation today, and he, br- I don't know if you guys saw this, but he, I don't know if it's making the rounds. He brings up diversity, like twice to Toki, and says like we want to make a divert like diverse company with diverse. And I was like kind of surprised that it almost seems like Sony is like very liberal minded in some sense, mm-hmm. especially by Japanese standards. Now, maybe I'm misinterpreting what he's specifically talking about, but it wouldn't surprise me, in other words, if they made this deal no, thinking that they want to double down on this. You know, um, yeah. Concord I, is so I, funny, I, I, though, I, I man. It's so weird. It's like, do you want to play as a guy with like my, your body type? And it's like, no, I'm like, <laughs> not me. I don't. <laughs> Jesus, no. Do you want to yeah. play as well, I, horribly designed characters where everyone well, looks there, like there, shit? There was, there was a character designer on Twitter uh, and he got a lot of backlash for it. But he was saying, like, look, as a black uh, graphic designer, I have I have been always pushing to have beautiful, hot black women as characters. And I would always get back the, the feedback and say, make her look more normal. And it's like that's crazy. And he, yeah. And he's like, dude, like, I'm not trying to make normal people. I'm trying to make aspirational uh, uh, characters. Right. Right. Like godly yeah. characters. And it's like, no, no, you need, she needs to be like a little bit more like heavier or she needs to like, you know, like her face well, needs to be round, yeah. rounder and everything like that. Um, well, the thing about that too is like, that, like, oh, I mean, Overwatch has like a, like a, a wide array of like character types and like people like, people like that, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's, it, it really is all about, 
Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like it really is all art direction, man. Like I think Concord could you could have all those characters with the same exact like, you know, what like if you have a character who's like, you know, black or, or whatever or like Indian or whatever or whatever that or like overweight or whatever, you could make that work with good character design. Roadhog mm-hmm. is like fucking like all over <laughs> Overwatch yeah, he's every an time I see beast it. Man, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and so exactly. like, yeah. like people good. people like it. It's just a matter of like can you've gotta make it fun. You gotta design it well, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. and some people can't design it well. Some people are just like, well, we're going to scan an actor and that'll be it. And it's, mm-hmm. and then we'll maybe exaggerate yeah. it. We'll, we'll move the slider around. It's like, you have to design characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just you scan fucking Norman Reedus and yeah. just throw him in a game. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, he's cool in Death Stranding. I'll give him <laughs> I mean, he is a character in Death Stranding. <laughs> and we all love Death Stranding. Here, yeah, but, but, yeah. Yeah, but no, yeah, but it's <laughs> Sam Porter Bridges. Is clearly he is designed. He's also. just Norman Reedus. Well, yes, he, he is. Al- is well, dressed like that. Just, <laughs> well, he literally says, "Like, have you guys seen Ryan by Norman Reedus?" Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, that's Norman great. Reedus. Yeah, but like the what I'm saying is like the, the like, yes. you know, the the baby in the capsule, the thing on the shoulder going like yeah. this. You know, like there's yeah. design. You can't yes. just throw a fucking person in a, in a tank top and he just like looks like a fucking normal person. It's like okay, that's it. Yeah, they didn't just make a fat guy and like make it like. Well, he has a blue jacket on though. You know. Yeah, it's like it's a blue jacket fat guy. Blue jacket, yeah, blue jacket goggles, fat guy. That's, yeah. that's the only thing like, that that's it. That 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 one of the characters in Concord is. There's nothing in, like interesting yeah, about no, that. That was that was my that was my irritation point with Concord too. Was like so many of the characters were just like, this is just a fucking person mm-hmm. dressed, yeah, relatively mm-hmm. kind of normal, it, despite the fact that like this is like a weird mm-hmm. universe. There was like a, a robot that was just a fucking Michelin man. Like I, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's interesting. I'm, I'm glad you said that, Colin, the, about what Totoki said because it, it it does feel like that. It does seem like it's coming from the top. It does yeah. feel like that. I think Sony has like Disney like aspirations. They want to. They they really want to have this sure. diverse uh, uh, cast of characters that 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 anybody can latch onto. The world can latch onto. Yeah, but it's not it's not been going well for Marvel in particular on that front. Yeah, yeah, because they oh, because they, they just cast Robert Downey Jr. That. again. You know, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's they so weird. I'm, I'm glad someone Concord. else said it. I know it's like so weird that they did that. In my opinion, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I like it. By that. You know, it made me clap like a fucking seal. But I get it. You know, if they, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, if... great, oh, I love it. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> I, I, get I, it. I, I think it's cool. I think it's kind of cool because, like, as, as long as they like, look, man, I was like really, a, really an aside, but like, if. If they can resist the urge to have some character in the in those movies be like, you look familiar. If they can res- if they can resist that annoying urge and actually treat it like, okay, like this is a character, this is an actor playing a completely different role. This isn't like, you know, Tony Stark again. That could be interesting. It's cool, whatever. Go ahead, do it. You know that's not gonna happen. Nah, yeah, there's gonna have there's gonna be some character. They're gonna throw 100%. Deadpool in there. You're gonna throw Deadpool in there, you're gonna be like Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dude's Iron Man. Yeah, that's hundred yeah. percent gonna happen. This is why uh, I, I, this is why I don't want to watch a Deadpool movie because I'm just tired of that humor and like self referential crap. I never. I, for, for first of all, I never liked Deadpool in the comics either. I, I always fucking hated his ass. Did, so, so did you like role. the first movie? Huh? I didn't like the first movie. I I don't like Deadpool as a character. I fucking uh, well, hate him. Well, so, then don't see it. Yeah. yeah. So I shouldn't <laughs> see it. But yeah, I just don't like Deadpool. I don't think he's funny. I don't think his trick is funny. You know, I think Ryan Reynolds is funny. I think he's doing a good job with the character that I don't like. So, right, it's right. funny, man. Like, as just a casual, more casual comic guy growing up, um, you know, I, I bought some Marvel toys and I would watch some of the cartoons and all that kind of stuff. I had only seen Deadpool in his drawn form and really didn't. And I knew he had like some sort of zany personality, but he looks really cool. I love katanas, it's like my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you like get a vibe for him, and I'm like, oh no, that's not what I really thought it was. So, I wasn't really, he looks like it. a G.I. Joe character, yeah, yeah. He does he totally does. He looks like what he totally looks like does. Storm Shadow's like friend or something, thousand know? <laughs> percent, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, he totally looks uh, like a G.I. Joe character. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Colin, uh, Hiroki Totoki Literature Club talking about um, the diversity thing is interesting. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. But mm. if Concord is their vision of that, they have got to pivot so hard. If that's yeah. their vi- vision of diversity, they mm-hmm. got to stop immediately and sort that shit out because they're going to become even more of a laughing stock if they continue with this. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. it, it's uh, you're right. And I think Gene made such an a, it's like such a prescient point, actually, like they especially with the other things he was saying today, they do want to become like a Disney. And yeah, he said something. Uh, and again, it's in my notes for sacred tomorrow. So I'll talk about it more then. I guess he says something along the lines of uh, of IP is like at the center of everything we do. 
or something like mm-hmm. that. It's like, what? Yeah. It's just, yeah. It just goes to show you how Sony has morphed from, and we all know this intuitively, PlayStation is the biggest thing they do, but PlayStation's not so much the mach- machine anymore. And this one time, like electronics maker and pioneer and all this different media and all this suddenly owns a shit ton of video games and movies and music and all the rest. And they just want more of that which is where the whole Paramount deal came from. They were like, oh, we can own mm-hmm. Star Trek and like, <laughs> like own all these different things. They want more of that. And they, there, I would say there are no shortcuts, but there are shortcuts. I mean, you're seeing it with Ac- A- Xbox and Activision. There are, there actually are su- significant shortcuts that have the Xbox ecosystem in quotes. Halo was a shortcut. Mi- Bungie, Bu- million... Microsoft buying Bungie was a shortcut, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. A one-time yeah. Mac developer coming and making this console game for Mac's, you know, at that time, heated rival um, is interesting. And yeah, so I, I look at it and I just think like 500 million users for in the Xbox ecosystem. And of course, that means King and that means that means people on PlayStation playing Minecraft and that means a bunch of different things. But that's like that's more that is the aspiration. And so that's a really good point, Gene, um, about them and where their mind is and who they think they compete with, because mm-hmm. The other companies all have diff- different mentalities. Nintendo's the same, by the way. Yeah, Nintendo's, mm-hmm. Nintendo's yeah, close. To, Microsoft's cards. different. N- N- Nintendo is doing that, though. Nintendo is doing that. Sony is trying to do that. Microsoft doesn't know how to fucking do it. So, Yeah, I yeah. think... And, and geez, man, Sony is producing the, the Zelda movie, which That's is true. interesting. Yeah. You know, Dude, that movie's probably going to suck. I'm so nervous about it. <laughs> it's going to be... Da- it, maybe we'll make it like the old IGN 2008 trailer that we made that freaked everyone out the live action <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I hated that i know a lot of people liked that but i hated, I hated that it. It, it was so fucking ugly oh it was, yeah it was yeah. all like it was really yeah. saturated and yeah um, it was fucking shit we were God. really proud. we were oh, <laughs> why I are they doing we. this to zelda man why are they making a live action yeah why I, yeah <laughs> i'm excited about it man if it's half as good as morbius dude no it's gonna be funny because of how bad it is, but like the Resident Evil movies. St- have, you, have you guys seen Madam Web? I heard Madam Web is worse than more. Oh, Madam Web not. is Madam Web is awesome. <laughs> Madam Web is. I highly recommend Madam Web. Okay, everybody in the audience Mimoto. watch Madam Web right now. <laughs> yeah. Mimoto won't be happy about that. <laughs> I then speaking of bad movies, I actually just got a free ticket to see the Borderlands movie, so I'm going to do that this weekend. Oh yeah, oh, it's doing very well. Or like yeah, 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 yeah. Reviews are. are Wait, is it out? Yet. Uh, it's coming out Friday, so I don't have an advanced oh. screening. They did not give me an advanced screening ticket. So. Yeah, the embargo is oh, up today pled. for people that did see it. Yeah. Um, Ooh. All right. I wanted to ask a couple more things as we get towards the tail end of our podcast here. Do, what do you make of this? So in, in a lot of the reporting about Bungie, there's this notion of Bungie magic. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering what you guys think of that whole idea. That like they just oh that it'll come together because yeah that it'll come together and that they they ultimately figure it out and all that now I think that that's uh, been that's somewhat proven but yeah they they ran out of MP that's all gone there's no more magic it's clear as day that they've lost the magic financially particularly I mean I guess Lightfall was good or not Lightfall uh, Final, Shape. Final Shape was good mm. but it's like man it's not mm. it's not good. Because they're fine, they're dying financially, so the magic is definitely gone. Mm. Bioware is struggling for a long time, and they're still not out of the gutter yet. So everyone's out of MP right now. I'm really interested mm. to see how, as I said earlier, how Dragon Age does. Because I don't think it looks very good personally, but I know a lot of people are, are amped up about it. I, I'm just like, is this excited. is what you've been doing. Like I see, I see, in my opinion, I see this and I'm like, this is that's it. This is, this is what yeah. you've been doing. You know, that, that, that's my feeling. It yeah. looks fine, but. All yeah, this weight yeah. after Anthem, and 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 that's all you got, really. Yeah, you know? More power to you, though. Um, we'll see. Again, it's Marvel like too. You know, it's like fuck. You know, like and everyone's yeah. so late on the trend because Marvel was They're hot like years six years late. ago. Right. Yeah. Just the art style in that introductory trailer, which is not the way the game looks, but they they have this sure. pre-render or whatever, and it's like Jesus. I I remember looking at it for like ten seconds and being like, I cannot believe this. You know? Oh my god, I can't believe it, it looks like a fucking Fortnite clone. Mm-hmm. But that's not. Actually yeah, that's what I posted about the Marilyn Manson. Uh, 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 what, what, what was this? What was the song? The new shit or whatever. Um, that they that was the soundtrack for the first Dragon Age game. And it's like, man, you know, Marilyn Manson's a fucking asshole. But you know, that shit, that commercial was f- fucking ruled. You know, that was like mm. real. That, that had soul. You know. Well, we'll see how that does later this yeah. fall. I'll be very curious. I'm gonna be watching. I'm not gonna play it though. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah. Go ahead, Chris. 
No, yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I think when you compare uh, the big bees, right? I guess like you think about Bioware, Blizzard, Bungie. Mm-hmm. Bungie's problem seems to be, uh, it really seems to be managerial and and money and all, all business stuff. Like they're just clearly, and even from the early days, it was, it was so clear that these were just a bunch of guys. <laughs> in an office who had no idea how to how to really do the business they just wanted to make shit and it seems like on some level that that attitude has persisted to a level of like financial irresponsibility that i almost like totally understand (laughs) where it's like yeah you're not you're not meant for this you handed this off to people who like you assumed would be better because they were from microsoft and like from other places or whatever and turns out they weren't particularly good at it either (laughs) so like whoops but i do think you know, even and I brought this up at, at a in a previous podcast. I think like when you think about the output of Bungie in the Microsoft days with Halo, you had, you had Halo, Halo, Halo Two, Halo Three, ODST, and Reach. You had five games uh, across uh, about 10, 11 years uh, that all seemed to slap. And then you think yep. about and then you think about the journey that Destiny has been on, and it's been on despite the fact that they've had to do annualized releases. They seem to have hit. Over the last ten years, a somewhat similar cadence because you, because you have the Taken King, you have Forsaken, you then then you have like like a similar like an equivalent number of like those hits. If Bungie was allowed to just go at the at the rate that they clearly strike the best at, which is like not every single year, it's very clear that they can they seem yeah. to be able to do it because Witch Queen was fucking awesome, Forsaken was fucking dope, Taken King was fucking dope, Final Shape was great. And so it's like they clearly can still make good shit. They just need better management. And I I don't know. Like, I do think there is like a doom and gloom in the air about Bungie. And it would be insane to like pretend like there's no good reason for it. Like, there's very clearly like a big talent purge. There's very there's a lot of people shifting out. There's probably people who are maybe they might be really key people from, uh you know, Bungie core that is splitting off into this, um you know, first party studio. Who the, who the fuck knows, really? But. In my opinion, from like a quality output perspective, they have not hit the point of like Mass Effect Andromeda or Anthem or like, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> re- like true. launch day Diablo 3. I think mm-hmm. like if there is bungee magic left in there, I think there's like I think we'll see it in Marathon. And if that's really if if Marathon does not hit, then it'll be over, you know, but I don't think the final shape is something that a studio can put out if there's no if mm-hmm. there's nothing left. Because that shit, like, re- like speaking truthfully, like, Witch Queen and Final Shape, I would put over some Halo games, mm. like that they've mm. made, mm-hmm. and so like, and that's not normal. Like, I, it would be really, mm. I, I would not put a, any Destiny expansion other than maybe those two over any, even the Halo Combat Evolved, which I'm like probably like the most down on, just because it's so old and you know archaic. Um, even as a Bungie fan myself, so it really, it, it cannot be overstated how much is riding on marathon and not just from a quality standpoint because maybe the quality will be there but like it has to hit financially too that has to be the biggest thing since fucking sliced bread in order for it to really like pull them out of this gutter um uh with sony um whether or not the public will you know be hot on it or whatever it's like that's almost like a completely different story like it just needs to do well yeah because there's plenty of games that are you know critically acclaimed that don't do well at all you know and so i don't know i I guess we'll we'll see when marathon's out which is presumably next year although i imagine a delay is in uh, probably in order at this point yep chris how about this analogy for their magic sure yeah they're using their health they're using life tap they're taking away health to get more mana (laughs) back they're slowly killing themselves to keep the magic coming but Mm. there's going to be a breaking point we're getting there and oh for sure marathon is like the final the final moment probably marathon's it this is this is a quick time event man and they better they nail they better nail difficulty yeah you better fucking nail it it's kind of like smoking in bioshock right like you or, or drinking alcohol in Bioshock, you know that you're tanking your health, but then your MP is gonna gonna go up. Exactly. Keep, yeah. Keep shooting up. You're sacrificing yeah. health for MP. Yeah. Yeah. So keep drinking, Bungie. Keep, keep drinking. <laughs> keep keep guzzling that alcohol. Yeah. Well, what, what's everyone else's feeling on Marathon? I mean, are, are you guys feeling optimistic? Like, I just don't play oh. these kinds of games, so. Yeah. I th- I, I think, I think one, it's really cool. Oh, all right. So let's let's go to you first. I think the idea, could, from my understanding, it's an extraction shooter, right? Is that the uh, mm-hmm. idea, Chris? 
Yeah, the I mean, th- there was some internal reporting that it shifted to a hero shooter, but I don't think that that's necessarily mutually exclusive. Because I yeah, do think, exactly. like, I mean, you could still yeah, do that. Yeah, you it's still it'll, have... it'll, yeah, it, it can still be an extraction shooter, like in the same way that Apex Legends is a battle royale and a hero shooter at the same time. It's like yeah, exactly. there, there are uh, there was a lot of like panic about that. So, so, so it's not an extraction shooter anymore. It's like no, no, calm down. Like this is not yeah. like a genre. This is a style, and so. Uh, I'm not super big on the hero shooter angle. Like I like the I, I like Bungie games specifically because they are so like customizable and 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 so uh, you know you build your own person. But like mm-hmm. you know maybe there's maybe there's data to show that people respond more to heroes, and that's like fine, whatever. Like I I think they can do that pretty well. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be an extraction shooter, and in my opinion, like if it if it retains any of the style from that reveal trailer, I'm super dope on it. Like because like I think oh that was one God. of the few. Visually? Yeah, yeah, it's just it, gorgeous. It's, Awesome. It's like it was like cartoonish, but like not Fortnite, but not like gritty, but not like it. I don't know. There was something about it that felt really it was invigorating really fresh. to me. Yeah, it, it was really fresh. fresh. Like nothing looks like that right now. Yeah, there's which a, is they're, super important. There's that shot of the guy bleeding out in like the yeah. the the like the puddle of like milk looking shit, and I'm like, this is and the 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 silkworms weaving skin on the, like an Andra. It's like this is sick as hell. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's potential there for sure. Artistically, I don't think Bungie's really ever missed. I think they just like no, they, they don't. Their art, their art team has been like so good for so long. Um, so I'm at, I'm at least expecting it to. Even if let's say let's say Marathon is only slightly slightly better than Concord, like worst case scenario, right? That visual design is going to carry a lot because visual yeah. design carries a lot. Like, and I, I really, I really do think that's a core reason why Concord is doing so poorly. And, and like, I don't think it's necessarily because the gameplay is bad, although like there are parts of it that are, I do think it is a lot of just like, it's such an ugly, yeah. and I don't mean graphically. I don't, I don't mean like fidelity wise. I mean, just like visual design, like character design. It's like, it's not there. The world's and, so boring, you know, like what, like what are these maps, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing that I'm most, ex- most excited and curious about, um, obviously I'm worried about it given the state of the studio and like, who the fuck knows, like, it, it, you know, a studio has earned your trust until they don't. You know what I mean? We saw that with um, uh, CD Projekt Red. You know, they were riding high with The Witcher and then Cyberpunk came out and it was a fucking mess. Although I liked it at launch, to be fair. But I didn't play it on PS4 where it was completely fucking unplayable. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm excited about it purely because they they have a way of getting me into genres that I wouldn't normally like. Like I didn't really love first person shooters before Halo. I played Medal of Honor and Doom and I thought they were cool, but like Halo really hit hit with me. And then uh, MMO RPG looter shooters. Like I played Borderlands and it was okay, but like it didn't really hit. And then Destiny hit and it was like, oh, this is good. I love, I love it. I'm into it. Mm -hmm. And extraction shooters are kind of the same. Like I've played Tarkov. I've played a little bit of like Hunt Showdown. And like, I, I, I get it. I understand that there's something there, but it doesn't, it's not grabbing me. And I feel like this. I feel like they could do it for me because they just seem yeah. to do it all the time. But we'll see. I it could. It could f- be a fucking like disaster. They, they could be the big mainstream game for that genre. Like yeah. Tarkov is, you know, big, but you have to go through their their whole like launcher and everything like that, which is a pain in the ass. And Hunt Showdown is, has a, a respectable audience, but nothing is like humongous. Nothing is like on the size of Valorant or anything like that or Apex Legends. This could be the game that puts that style on the map and because people aren't burnt out of these types of games yet you know like people are burnt out on hero arena shooters right now people are over that kind of shit which is what concord is i think yeah bungie can totally tap a mark here if it's good and especially yeah. because their shooting is always incredible every single game shooting feels so good in all their games I can't wait to see what they do. Like, Colin, do you know what an extraction shooter is or yeah. anything like that? Yeah, I do. Okay. But someone had described this to me. I don't know if this is accurate as, as to like the dark zone in the division. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. So yeah. that's, yeah. That, so, which I never once got out of alive because I've only played by myself. But, no but Sony I sure game, would try. Yeah. No Sony games doing anything like that, you know? So I think they could totally, I think Marathon could be a big game. Their pricing model. If they are doing what Con- with Concord did, I'm concerned. I think yeah. that game has to be free or very, very cheap, like twenty dollars to get people into that kind of game. Yeah. So I think they, they I think they're think learning that, that this isn't going to always work for them. But I think Helldivers sent very mixed signals. You know, when I think yeah, I, I think yes. a game of Bungie's quality. But there's could. no game like Helldivers that they're competing with. 
There's right. no other competitor like Helldivers. How Helldivers is laid out. They're not like that. There's no free to play games like that necessarily. My yeah. curiosity w- with Marathon will always be extraction shooters are kind of I mean, they are st- like they've been around for a while, but they're kind of a niche thing still. You know, they're not like like uh, like Brad said, they're not massive in the mainstream. They're, they haven't had that Fortnite battle royale. They haven't had that, um, you know, Overwatch moment for hero shooters. You know, um, this could be it. It's a big if like who the fuck knows, really? Like, it could be right. it could end up being a travesty. But I guess my curiosity is because so many of these games are so niche. My my curiosity really is like how. Like, how are they going to make it profitable in a way that justifies the amount of research? Like, how are they going to get, like, Fortnite-style monetization in a game like this if so many of the games that are popular in this space don't dabble in that, really? Like, that's that's my that's my curiosity. Like, I, And I, to be fair, I have very little, you know, experience with extraction shooters. Um, so maybe they do have like some kind of crazy monetization. Maybe there is data out there to suggest yeah. that like Tarkov, Tarkov makes a boatload of money. I, I really don't they know. They have like crazy um, shit you can buy <laughs> that like yeah. goes too right, far. So, yeah. So maybe, maybe they'll, maybe they got something in the work. Like, I, I'm hoping for marathon. I, I, I'm, I love Bungie. It would be really sad to see them go. Although, you know, g- game studios last, you know, I'm kind of astounded that it's, it's gone this long without you know, a catastrophic failure. And, and like we already talked about, like there was already theoretically a ca- catastrophic failure because a 45% miss of, uh, you know, revenue projections like that, that would kill most companies. So the fact that they kind of, they're on this second win now is like, that's a chance you better not waste, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, mm-hmm. that's what I was thinking with. I was going to say this earlier and I just, I, uh, I didn't get to for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I just didn't think of it was the one advantage Bungie has, in my opinion, with marathon and just generally speaking, is actually a similar advantage to Bioware in its own space um, is just it has like a little beachhead people. There is a trust built in the, to the brand. Like people still have an affinity for the brand and they have success in the space that they're trying to enter. So like they, they have a presence and that helps. And the major advantage that Sony gives to them, I think is just shoving the games down people's throats from one right. particular platform, which Sony usually shows a lot of restraint in doing. But you see subtle ways that they do it. Like if you go to the PS5 games and you order them by newest to oldest, Concord is in the top left, right? Like you can go orders of magnitude more than that to get, if as long as you don't take advantage of it with people, getting that one big game in front of people. And that's a thing that Marathon really might have behind it when it comes out is it just being everywhere on PlayStation 5 and launching off of that, even though it will be everywhere, it can use that very similar to the Game Pass effect, bring a lot of attention and unearned marketing towards various games. So Maybe there is something there, but it's just so competitive. That's my whole thing is I just don't gaming is a time investment. You're going to have to Mm. wean people off of other products. Yeah. Um, And a lot of the other thing is that a lot of the success of the game might come from destiny people that will just, you know, not that they're the same kind of game, but Bungie fans that would otherwise maybe be spending time with Bungie games somewhere else. So it's, uh, you know, like a destiny too. So. Well, th- well, think about a lot of the people who are lapsed from Destiny who just will would not, you know, be interested in Destiny going forward because the the model is so confusing. Who are now like very very eager or or who haven't played a Bungie game in a very very long time, but are now like, ooh, wait, ooh, this is interesting. I think it was a very a very canny move of Bungie to go for a genre that does not have again like they don't have that Overwatch, they don't have that Fortnite. It's very smart as opposed to like concord which is like okay let's go do an overwatch thing it's like what like what are you trying yeah. to and it, it even overwatch isn't doing well right now is or you know colloquially like it, as far as like i've seen like maybe it's financially doing fine but it's not like people yeah. aren't talking about it and yeah, so it's not what it once you know, was i don't think you know by any stretch of the imagination so that's 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 bungie's advantage in this in in going into marathon is again they have a lot of built-in trust they have a lot of people who like bungie games who don't like destiny who are just eager to play something from them that they could probably get into on the ground floor um there's a lot of and, and again just there, there's no big competitor really like tarkov is big and hunt showdown on is steam though hmm? it's like Tar- tarkov's not even on steam you have to go through their whole thing. right if yeah. they could tarkov, get marathon on steam that's huge tarkov is the biggest one as far as i know like i know hunt mm-hmm. showdown is very hardcore it's a great mm-hmm. game by the way it's like it's but it's so hardcore it's like like oh my god it's it's pretty intimidating actually but I, I yeah, don't think I mean, any of these games are free either, by the way. 
I'm no, looking. Tarkov, I know, is is you have to and hunt. So they could charge some of it if they charge forty dollars or thirty dollars. They could yeah. maybe get away with that. Yeah, I think I think a bungee game could justify that too. Like, I mean, like it, again, yeah. really, a lot of it really comes down to how Concord came off, and it's just like it doesn't doesn't come off yeah. particularly well. And and the parts where there is ex- you could see the expensiveness, you could like see where the money is going, are not the parts that are important to the success of that type of game. You know what I mean? Right. It's not it's not in the gameplay, it's not in the feel. Although some of it's there for sure, it's it's all in like the facial animations of these cutscenes, which you know, depending on who you are, is just either completely either the only thing you care about or the literally the least important thing you could possibly demand out of a game like this. So interesting, interesting times. I'm very curious to see like yeah. what how Marathon shakes up. I'm I'm rooting for it and I'm hoping for it, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, yeah. if, it doesn't, if it doesn't hit. I hope it's great, man. It sounds really exciting to me. I would love that. As someone who's doesn't want to play Destiny, but I still like Bungie. Yeah. That's for me. I would like I, w- I would like to get into an extraction shooter. That would be cool. Yeah. Get some new flavor. My final inquiry is I guess we get out of this episode is um how do we feel about the reporting surrounding I guess the ascent of this guy named Tyson Green? on the destiny team and their oh, approach yeah. apparently behind the scenes um, to pursue destiny two as a free to play or, or I guess not. Well, I guess wouldn't be free to play technically um, just future expansions that are not based on single pays or, sh- or seasons or anything like that, but rather just having things available to people and maybe expanding the player base that way, a more modernized approach. Um, do you think they the had a free to play thing, right? I'm sorry. They had a free to play thing, didn't they, Chris? But no, they it's they been, it's been free. It's been free to play. Yeah, they do. I'm saying future content will not be will apparently not be available in that mm-hmm. same in that same rhythm. But in, according to the reporting from Bloomberg, oh yeah, there's um, a there's no a more like happening. this will be the last of the paid expansions. Apparently, I see. Yeah, which was I, I mean in some ways expected. Like I mean it's literally the final shape. It's a lot of it is kind of telegraphed and uh, the curious the curiosity of what was going to happen with destiny going forward is 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 you know it's still there i guess tyson green i like a lot like tyson green has been with bungie for a very very long time um he's like one of the ogs i remember i would i remember seeing him in a lot of the vidocs that i used to watch when i was like obsessed about like you know how games were made and really bungie was one of the earliest studios putting out like readily accessible vidox that you could i love that it's kind of it's, yeah it's, it's, it was, it's why like i have such a strong relationship with bungie because of those fucking documentaries you know i feel like i know these guys you know except yeah for sure <laughs> yeah there's definitely yeah <laughs> yeah no i i think um no tyson green um I, look what they're doing with destiny i i'm not super stoked about necessarily like it's not exciting obviously like knowing what's going on internally and knowing like how this shakeup is going to affect it. Obviously, Destiny is going to be winding down, and that's kind of a shame uh, because, especially riding off of the final shape, I feel like there was a lot of places they could have gone. Um, whether Marathon affects that in some way, like is the big is the big success, and 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 can maybe justify some more more uh, investment into Destiny as a franchise, or maybe even just like taking a break from Destiny entirely, and then maybe Destiny Three comes out like fucking I don't know, ten years. I think that'd be pr- that'd be pretty exciting. That'd be a good actually. idea. Yeah, um, but. I think leaving leaving Destiny in the hands of Tyson Green is probably the smartest thing you could do because this is this is uh, they used to call these guys grizzled ancients, <laughs> these people who have been there forever, and uh, so I mean it's a good it's a good guy to leave the team with as far as what they're doing. Not super exciting to me, but uh, I can't think of better hands that you would leave that that project uh, in. Um. How do you guys, anyone else have any input on this, on this, um, this free to play approach or this, uh, well, I think it's interesting because destiny two itself is just winding down, I guess you said, cause there's going to be no more expansions. Mm. So yeah, you might as well do that to get some fun, get some money coming. If you're not going to be charging people for expansions, you're gonna charge them still with other stuff. Like they already have a ton of in-game cosmetics and stuff like that that are ch- expensive. So, yeah, I don't see why not. Why not do it? Yeah, I'll be interested, too. I, I, I asked just as from perspective of people that that are more familiar with the game than I am, because some of these things seem permanent. And then sometimes I just feel like it should be OK to have a really institutional, popular game that does come and go eventually. You know, yeah. everything feels like it needs to be perpetual or as a failure. I hate that shit. Mm hmm. 
Yeah. It's unsustainable. It's it's just it's how is that going to work? Not everything yeah, can be World not, of Warcraft and shit, you know. Like, well, it's also just not true either. It's like cuz like they're that, that by that metric every single one of Bungie's games before Destiny would have failed. You know, because they they they're not oh, well the, uh, people enjoyed them and now they're gone. It's like does that make them bad? It's like no, that's not really it's, it's not a it's not a helpful metric, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but then there's Final Fantasy 14 which we start Dawn Trail which is, you know, as, as I understand it, Brad, because you mm-hmm. please correct me if I'm wrong, but Endwalker ended the, the like a yep. major storyline, and yeah, and the ten year storyline, a new one. So, mm-hmm. yeah. as far as Final Fantasy 14 is going, it's just going to keep going, and it did help Square yeah. Enix's finances. Uh, uh, I think uh, another ten years, they said. Wow. So, okay. twenty years, but that doesn't mean they won't make another MMO in between that. Yeah. Like how they had 14 come out when 11 was still going. Yeah. I mean, shout out to Destiny. Destiny did meet the 10 year. Well, I mean, Destiny 1 and 2, but Destiny, yep. the, the, the franchise, did meet its goal of 10 years. So they did do yeah. that. They, they, yeah, you know, that's true. Uh, yeah, people they... bled and died for it, but, you know. <laughs> and it's expensive people, well, as fuck. Well, but, yeah. well people, people, people died and bled for the Halo 2, especially. You know, so like, that's, that's, <laughs> that's nothing true. new necessarily. So, that's true. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I'll, I'll, I will always remember the Halo 2 documentary disc that came with the special edition of Halo 2, and they talked about how shitty it was it was to work on Halo 2. Dude, it's amazing. It, it was it remarkable. Is, the fact that that was just okay for them to put out, like it's just like here's how we killed ourselves making this fucking game for you people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, that, and it, it was it had footage of like it had footage of them yelling at each other. They're like, "What the fuck are you doing? Well, well if you want to do this, like like being like really passive aggressive against each other, like like during the work yeah. hours." It was so revelatory. You never, you, you rarely see stuff like that in video game documentaries. Now it's always like, oh, well, this yeah, is- it's very polished yeah. now. There, there's a yeah. realness that is kind of instilled in Bungie for a long time, and and I'm, obviously I'm very biased. I love this studio. I think they're just like very interesting. They have an interesting culture. They have interesting people. They have interesting figureheads. They have an interesting history. I mean, even when 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 they were bought by Sony initially, like we talked about it on the show, how it's just like how interesting that the studio went from like a Mac developer to like an Xbox developer to an Activision developer to a Sony developer. It's crazy. Like their journey is insane. Yeah. And, and um, uh, no, I, I just think uh, this is a studio to pay attention to. What were you going to say, uh, Gene? Oh, because, you know, but remember Bungie.net and how like like revolutionary that was to have like an online presence and message boards and a community like a like a dedicated community on for Bungie and Halo games on there. I was on yeah. Bungie.net all the time. So yeah. I felt like, again, this was really one of the companies that really, really established like an online presence and a connection uh, with its players. And yeah, they were very, very like real. They talk about how, you know, they don't want to be evil. They have these the, the seven pillars of principles that i don't think they even follow anymore you know yeah yeah um, they, that's what uh, always happens yeah, yeah. for sure like they, 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 what, was that, what was that thing with google where they yeah they got, do they you got know evil or whatever you know evil. <laughs> yeah yeah so bungie and google kind of were, were kind of had that same like i love know. that it's one yeah, of my favorite so it goes back to story. like bungie trying to become like a silicon valley type company you know like oh my god look at our cafeteria look at our knitting classes you know yeah yeah um damn i was gonna say something but i, I totally i lost it no, oh, well, doesn't matter. Well, I'm sorry. Um, that's why I, I I know I always just have these friggin' scribblings because I always forget afraid I'm gonna forget something and then I look at them sometimes I don't even know what the hell I was trying to tell myself. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I have I have a notepad too and I'm like, what the fuck? Like is I can that read mean? it, but I don't know like what I meant by, <laughs> by that what I what I wrote down. Anyway, uh, I, oh, I remember. I was oh, gonna, I was gonna say like there's a lot of studios that like have have done this right. They've done this like okay, ten year plan, ten year plan, mm-hmm. never fucking shakes up. They, they never make it like a- anthem was supposed to be like this huge thing uh i remember um avengers <laughs> avengers avengers game. was supposed to be that huge uh, that blows my fucking mind by the way that whole that whole story with mm. avengers blows my mind um even halo like there's no look no shot halo infinite halo infinite it. there's no shit like halo infinite what 2021 i think <laughs> yeah no shot it's making it to 2031 are you kidding <laughs> No way. Yeah, no way. With, with the, on the fucking Xbox One hardware? Like, no. Why the fuck did they say that, too? Like, is it, you're just copying Bungie? Like, yeah, like, why? Like, we don't fuck? want this out of this anyway. Like, it's a completely, it's so weird. I, 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 I say that as a backhanded, I, I like Halo Infinite. It's good. But, like, I mean, come on. Like, yeah. get, get fucking real. Um, so, I mean, props to them for actually staying with it this long and actually going out in, in, on what I consider, like, a genuine bang. Like, Final Shape is fucking 
great. Yeah, I really want to play Final Shape because I was watching My Name is Bayef's latest video. Because my for people who don't know, My Name is yeah, Bayef is, is like a huge like lore keeper, and he's basically the Vati video of 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 yeah. Destiny, right? He's uh, he's the reason anybody knows but, what's going on. Exactly, and then so he had a fun video yesterday where he was shouting out all the narrative folks uh, that got got laid off. But as he was doing that, he was showcasing like different scenes in the Final Shape. I showed and I was like, holy shit, the writing and the scenarios and like it's what's good, going on in the gameplay, like the way this, this world was like shaping around you, like as you're walking in it. I was like, wait, that happens in the final shape? Really? That looks it's fucking good. awesome. It's good, I, I wish I could play Destiny 2 right now, mm. you know? That's a shame. Yeah. It's too bad. You know, it looks really cool. And I'm a, I'm a last Destiny player, but there's nothing that it's really, really hard for me to get back into, you know? Yeah, I would. I would rather it. play Final Fantasy fourteen, and that would take like months for Atta me to boy. get to the cool parts, you know. But at least, <laughs> at least, there's a linear pathway through, you know. Yeah, they didn't vault Heaven's Ward, you know. Yeah, have, yeah. you're at Heaven's Ward now. Yeah. All right, my friends. Well, I appreciate you guys. I won't take any oh, any more of your time. Two hours is a nice media runtime for Sacred Plus. Yeah. Um, let's go around this, the horn and say goodbye to everyone. Gene, thank you for being here. Appreciate you. Good to t- speak with you again. We just spoke yesterday, so that's two two days in a row. It's nice to nice to talk to you again. Yeah, yeah, a lot of podcasting, but thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, as a lapsed Destiny player, but I am a I am a huge Bungie fan. Um, I was really excited for Destiny. Destiny that was revealed at the at at an early PS4 event, you know, so it was very mm-hmm. PlayStation aligned too. At, yeah, at, since the very beginning. Um, yeah, and and I said on Twitter, but I seriously considered working at Bungie because that because fucking Pete Parsons offered me a job. Well, he didn't really offer me a job. But like he was like, oh, we should talk. We we should talk about you like joining our team or whatever. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I didn't really put forward. And then uh, two years later, he laid off the person that got that, that got that oh, job. So, yeah, oh, good. Thing. Well, not good for that. Uh, but good that you avoided that anyway. Good, good I don't, I, it's a huge bullet. Imagine if I had to fucking move there and work in budget. But I, I'd be a, an expert knitter by now. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Your monthly yeah, knitting lessons. L- lost True. opportunities there, but whatever. Chris, goodbye oh, to you. Funny. Yeah, goodbye. Thanks for thanks for having me on. It's nice to be uh, it, it's nice to be on one of these shows where I, I feel like I have a depth of knowledge, and then the, the comments can't be like Chris doesn't know fucking anything. Yeah, <laughs> they'll still say it. No, they will. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate it. It's fun. I, I like uh, I like to talk about the studio. They're just so fucking fascinating to me. Uh, and uh, yeah, any any opportunity I have, awesome. I'll do it. Yeah, thanks again. And then Brad, goodbye to you, my friend. Be well. Yeah, thank you for having me on. It was ha- I was very happy to talk about Bungie with you guys. I do like this team a lot. I'm mixed on them in recent years, but I want them to succeed. So hopefully they can find their way out. Yeah, we'll see. We'll be watching. Um, thanks again, guys. And thank you all out there for your love, kindness, and support. Follow things Last Day Media. Patreon.com slash Last Day Media for early ad-free access and lastdaymedia.store for merch. We'll see you next time for more. Until then, goodbye. Sacred Symbols, a PlayStation podcast, is a product and trademark of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC and is proudly recorded in the USA. The show is conceived by, is written by, and is directed by me, Colin Moriarty. My co-hosts are Chris Raygun Maldonado and Dustin Furman. The show is produced by executive producer Dustin Furman. It's edited by associate producer Ben Smith. All of Last Stand's theme music is by my best friend, Ramon Narvaez. As you know, all of Last Stand's shows, including Sacred Symbols, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer level on Patreon, our highest tier, and we're grateful for your thoughtful and kind contributions to our independent endeavor. Thank you.